Well, there it is. Hello there. This is Witty. Welcome to a Warcraft free review of models. Tons of them. Bonus models for human, orc, undead, night elf. There's uh, buildings, there's doodads, there's extras. So I'm going to take a look at this mega file. Excuse my throat. It's still a little bit sore, so it might sound a bit croaky from time to time. I've got Twitch chat with me, but I'll be referring to them every now and then if they write something that I want to raise as a point, because we're going to be looking through these together. So this is the Warcraft 3 Reforged Leak Previews, which you can find at HiveWorkshop.com. I'll put the link in the video description below. And we've covered all of these bits, except for this part. <coughs> so... What this is, is these are the Warcraft 3 Reforged models, and there's a lot of them. Basically screenshots of all the models, the renders for each of the races and the buildings. So we're going to go from the beginning, which is going to be the demons, within the game itself. So let's go into full screen. I'll give my critique, my thoughts, my opinions. This video might go a little bit long, so stay tuned and enjoy. So what we're looking at now... Looks like a whole bunch of demons. You can see on the left-hand side of the screen, these are the portraits that they're going to look like. Kill Jaden. Look pretty much like Kill Jaden would do. At least a lot more similar to the World of Warcraft model. So here's Goganosh. Now, I don't remember this particular demon, but I do like the look of the hammer. I know people have had issues saying he shouldn't have a hammer. I actually really like it, but then again, it's because it gives me some nostalgia for Dark Souls, the first boss in that. Looks very much like a kind of pit lord with a giant hammer. I think it's cool to give him like a different style of weapon. And then perhaps it means he's got a different style of swing animation as well. Because if he swings that exactly the same way he swings a pole arm, it's going to be a bit odd. But this looks cool. I think the face looks a little basic, but then again... That's fine. It's not a huge deal because I'm not worried too much about the hyper detail graphics. I think some characters might look a little bit more detailed than others. It doesn't look like there's as much um, flair in his face. It almost feels like the textures aren't quite fully rendered in. But still, I love the model. Now, we are taking a look at the Corrupted Ancient of War. Just one moment. Nick says Goganash is a base pit lord name. So I guess the base pit lord has a hammer now? Oh, that's a good point. Could be. I wouldn't have thought the Pit Lord from the tavern would have a hammer, though. He would surely have a pole arm, so I'm not sure. The Corrupted Ancient of War looking, wow, very, very dark and macabre, i got to say. It's got this evil vibe. If you look at the actual, it's got like horns here, and I doubt they look like horns before he's an Ancient of War model. I haven't seen like the reforged Ancient of War model, but I do like it. There are a lot more, um... Thinner. I suppose that's maybe for display and purposes of not taking up too much room. But the original Warcraft 3 Ancients of War, as far as I know, are very thick and wide. So this guy, I love the portrait. It looks just like he should do. He's just like almost dripping with disease. So I like the moon well too. Okay, we've got the Corrupted Tree of Ages here. So, you've got the different types of trees in their different tier lists. Obviously, pretty much the same model, just slightly bigger in a lot of ways. Although, there are some differences. Like, you can see this tree has, like, more of a glow here. Sparkle here, where this one doesn't have it. So, as they do progress, the trees get slightly different. So, you can see the totem at the top here. Not quite so decorative. This one starts to branch out, and this one's got some, like, red stripes on it. So, I assume this is player red. Because there's some red colorations to it. But it's not particularly colored to let you know who the tree belongs to. And no, it shouldn't be the purple player. Because corrupted trees and all of that kind of night elf buildings in the original Warcraft 3 had purple coloring. But you could still be player one red and have like some red coloration with it. So, I mean, it looks cool. The Tree of Ages face looks more like um, the Ancient of Wonders. But yeah, he looks very scary. I mean, it's pretty pretty horrific, to be quite frank with you. There are a lot of these to go through, so I'm not going to drown on too many of them. So get, you know, too in-depth with them, so to speak. Taking a look at the Demon Gate, I actually really quite like this. Very decorative. The original one is, again, kind of really wide, but this one doesn't necessarily need to be as wide, but still gets the point across. You've got those giant spikes that give it that width. But there's a lot of um, centralization here around the entrance. So where you would sort of portal in. 
And then these cloaked figures looking ominous at the side. Very similar to the actual um, Burning Crusade gate. Uh, look at the spikes at the top. The horrific sort of skull face on top. The burning pyres. And the uh, fell braziers underneath. And the steps look quite decorative with some sort of burning sort of fell fiery sort of material going through them again in the darker atmosphere it's really good the detail on that is very nice these are the units so that looks like a fell hunter that's the original doom guard so i guess they don't quite have the remember this stuff isn't like finished necessarily so that's a mistake I didn't necessarily put through with my previous video, so I apologize for that. Oh, by the way, if you enjoy this, make sure to thumbs up, subscribe, all that stuff. Smash that like button, see if we can get 500 likes again. I really do appreciate it when you guys help out with that. Uh, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. It does help out a lot. And if you do really want to go out a little bit of extra mileage, then patreon.com slash wittywarcraft. You can help support me over there for the content that I create for Warcraft 3. Check it out in the video description. Thank you very much. So these are the different characters. Not, I guess that's an Inferno. It has to be. And then Doom Guard. And that would be the rally point. Thank you, Tillum, for the sub. I've turned off notifications so they won't sort of interfere with this. But thank you, Tillum. He says uh, it didn't even want it to subscribe, but Twitch bamboozled me. Take your filthy sub. Thank you very much. I will. How's my cold? It's still cracking. I'm, I'm, I'm at the tail end right now. And um, it's basically just this horrible cough that kind of forces itself on me. So I've got a lozenge in my mouth to try to soothe my throat so I don't cough so much when talking. At the moment, it seems to be working. So the UI is interesting. It's all... You remember at BlizzCon, like, they kind of showed, like, the portraits sort of here-ish, didn't they? And there was, like, no sort of background to it as opposed to, like, the um, border that we currently have. I'm not sure which way they're going to definitely go UI-wise. Because you can see the peon icons here, whereas it's not like over here. So you still got this empty space over here, whether that's good or bad. Don't know. We're taking a look at the Blade Master of Black Rock. Now this is the thing. I'm trying to think back to my um, campaign days. Was the Blade Master? He was red, wasn't he originally? But I don't think he was a fell orc. I just think he was red. So how is that possible? Was I? I must be wrong. Like he has to be fell to be red. Because how can he be red otherwise? Unless it's some sort of paint. He was a fell orc. Okay, that would make more sense then. Because I'm like, how could he be red and not be fell? Unless they paint themselves. Because he's definitely got black painting on him. You can see like the stripes. The details are very nice. I like the weapon. He just looks like a cool looking blade master. That's still different to the other blade master models. He's got like those um, Japanese sort of sh leggings that we've seen on the armored blade master. But he doesn't have like the over the top sort of shoulder pad gear that some people complain about personally i actually quite like the model i like that it had so much flair because we're going to get different versions of the model so let's embrace and enjoy them so looking good to be honest i love the portrait this is more my preferred style where it's like hd version of the original models and it looks very clear as to what it is without too much detail like you can you don't need to see all the pores and every single thing that sort of just over pixelates the face so to speak it's very clear what this character is if you just look if you just look away and look at the portrait boom evil freaking orc demon you know that's what you need to see i don't need to see like super hyper detail because i i'd much prefer it when it's simplified power generator now so this is a nice looking crystal it looks like it's got some real form to it bulky but also holds that power within and the generator part underneath it is that created by like goblins or something it's got orcish sort of like symbolization a forge underneath here but these spiky parts look almost like they were contracted by uh goblins and like the greats here you got a this is like a demon uh, cage, I think. That looks like a fell orc burrow. So, you know you got the orc burrows. I imagine this is what the fell orc burrow equivalent looks like. Taking a look at the fell peon now. <laughs> he looks funny. He's still got that, that kind of podged belly. 
the shoulder plates, the spikes coming out of the hands, the very demonic thing. That's the thing they're definitely going for. It's more similar to the World of Warcraft style where they would stick a hole. If you think about how Garrosh looked when he was a bit corrupted, um, they get like these giant spikes out of like one of the forearms and then spikes coming out the back a little bit like Gul'dan. Except Gul'dan spikes are definitely quite different and he had those when he was green. But anyway, I think. So, yes. Uh, although the yeah, the, the green is the whole fell thing. So now when we're getting the blood, it turns them red. But I, the thing, anyway, I'm getting digressed. The red, I don't feel like I'm feeling the colorization, personally for me, as fell. In Warcraft 3, it is a vibrant blood red. It is very clear these guys are bad. For me, this almost looks like these guys have just had a bit of a tan. Do you know what I mean? It doesn't feel like they're actually properly fell yet they've got spikes and stuff like that which helps but if they were a brighter red like this like the skin coloration of this more brighter red than this kind of darker red palette or this pale red which looks looks more pink i like the models though they still look great i mean look at these guys wow they uh like are they fell are they orc warlocks because if they are, I don't remember them having such a shield. But there's no orc unit that holds a shield. So I think that's an orc warlock. Maybe shaman. Right. I'm not sure what the hell I'm looking at now. Could well be a doom guard. He's got big hoofs. He's got wings. His face is very unclear. He's wielding a hammer. So it's probably a model of a doom guard. Don't know if it's the default one. The infernal looks comical. He reminds me of, what is the character's name in Monsters, Inc.? The green guy with the little stubby legs and arms, but the big round body. It's kind of how I get this impression. Like he's got this big round sort of belly body and then like these, these, uh, these ligaments to sort of like stick out amongst it. Yeah, it's an interesting take on the Infernal. I'll grant you that. I would buy it as a model, say, for example. Like, if it's just a different version of it, that's fine. But if that's the default Infernal, I'm not a huge fan. I much prefer the original Infernal from Warcraft 3. <laughs> Magferidon. Yay, he's put on a few pounds. He definitely looks quite slouched, this guy. Now... This texturing at the top, what I assume this is, is it's not finished and that's supposed to be some sort of placeholder or the base for where fire will be placed on top like a spell effect but attached to the actual head model because when you look at the cinematic for Warcraft 3, the Pit Lord, he's like all fiery but in the game, he doesn't actually have like fire coming off his head so I don't know where, how they're going to get around that, whether they can actually have add a fire effect to the top of the skull going down that's like actual moving flames as the character moves the flames sort of glow behind do you see what i mean nick says orc warlord does have a shield okay yeah he does actually you're right there is i'm i'm remembering now yeah you're right he does he has this kind of weird stick that sort of almost looks like a pickaxe and he's got like a small shield so that was an orc warlock okay i love the face this is really cool Almost looks like he's got a spittle coming out as well. This is all you need to see. Like, a very close-up look of a very angry-looking pit lord. That's... It gets the picture across. Very clear, very obvious. Yeah, he's a cool-looking guy. I like it. All right. So this one looks more like the Dark Souls in terms of the colorization. He's got this kind of um, teal look to it. Now, this is uh, Manoroth. Because if you do look at the Warcraft 3 cinematic, you know the one where he goes... <laughs> you know, he's laughing and sort of like mocking Thrall and Grom. He actually does have a giant sort of breastplate. It's not a breastplate, I don't know what you would call that. But it's basically a breastplate chained to the front of his sort of like torso just on his belly. And it has this symbolization of this kind of demon with wings spread it doesn't look exactly like this but it is basic if you go back and look at that you will see what i mean belly plate is that really 
a loin plate? Is that is that the official term? I'm not sure. I like the shoulder pads though. Very sort of like sort of built in, like they've actually been lodged onto his shoulders, so they're actually tangible and they're very spiky. I actually quite like it. I'm growing on it a bit. I still think the face doesn't really remind me, and his teeth aren't nearly as sharp as they should be. If you look at the original Manoroth, obviously this might be how he looks in World of Warcraft. I don't know how they changed him, if he is in World of Warcraft. I haven't played the latest retail versions of World of Warcraft in a while. I'm, I'm come back to classic. But um, it's got way more sharp, pointy teeth that are like intersecting with one another. He looks a lot more threatening. This one looks a bit more dopey. His beard is gone. Oh, yeah. He had a bit of a beard, didn't he? You're right. He had, like, a black beard. Yeah. I think I like him with the black beard. Okay. So this is Mafog. You might remember this cheeky chap from the human campaign. When you are basically trying to help some villagers at the top right of the map. And he's like a kind of mini boss that you have to deal with. He looks cool. The face portrait is amazing. Like, the amount of snarl and personality. Like, look at the sheer vitriol. It's just incredible. The model doesn't quite look like an orc, though. And the horse looks a little bit funny underneath. Because it makes the orc... It looks makes the horse look small. But at the same time, I don't think he's big enough. So it's a weird juxtaposition. Because I want him to actually be bigger, thicker. But then the horse is going to look even weirder. So, you guys let me know what you think on that one. I like the weapon, though. Spiked. The giant shield. <clears throat> Maybe the horse could be wider to compensate for him being wider. Right. We've got some satyrs here, by the looks of it. I really like the satyrs. There's an actual female satyr, which I don't believe belongs in the game. Well, not to say it doesn't belong in the game. It's just it isn't actually in the base Warcraft 3 game. So that's perfectly fine. I like these little ones. Sort of like the detail and the fur sort of overlapping. The weapon is very fancy. I mean, that looks really cool design. Like, there's lots of different sort of shapes to that. They've got this kind of bushy tail, which is kind of funny. And these cool horns that very clearly spike up. But the different models have slightly different angled horns. Like, the big guy's got far larger horns that have to sort of curve in on themselves. Like the, um, the loin plate. Are we calling it the loin plate? Spikes, sort of like tribalistic spikes, sort of like um, strapped on. This guy, it's hard to tell his face whether he's got a mask on or not. He's certainly got a bit of a beard. And the female one, I keep thinking it's a Draenei, because that's how I kind of used to seeing him. But she's got rather luscious hair, hasn't she? For a rather feral, feral um, satyr. There's not even female satyrs in WoW, says Nick. Well... Get ready for it. Now that's a Doom Guard. That is a Doom Guard. So we've got updated icons here as well for the spells. Dispel Magic, War Stomp, Cripple, Rain of Fire. Not 100% sure what that one is. Not 100% sure on that one. But yeah, he looks cool. I think they're typically a little bit wider in the original Warcraft 3. But it's not to say that this doesn't work because... He's got a wide stance, so he's still pushing that forward. The fell sort of like sword looks cool. His armoring looks cool. It's like minimalistic, but at the same time gets the point across that he's evil. I like the horns. They look very fierce. He's got this big chunky sort of jaw-lined face. And the sort of fiery black dark hair that sort of like sweeps backwards. Giant spikes on the wings. Very cool. I like this one, actually, to be honest with you. And the portrait obviously looks good, too. He almost looks like a cross between Medivh and Kill Jaden. Like, he's almost, like, cloaked. Do you know what I mean? It's like a Kill Jaden that's undercover. Right. Now, this is a zombie. He's actually looking better in this picture. A lot of people didn't like my criticism of the original zombie. I thought he looked too big and bulky. And the version of it that I did look at, I think, was a bit too big and bulky. His arms were like freaking tree trunks. Which, the original zombies, they were skinny little bastards. And this looks much more like it. He's much more sort of depraved. He's completely hunched over. He's desperate, basically. I mean, look at the face. 
Very horrific. That, I like that. That zombie works for me. That looks much more like it. The original one is, it is disheveled. Whereas the one I looked at before in one of my previous videos, where I'm, I'm doing all these videos, so make sure to check out the channel, youtube.com slash wittywarcraft. Tons of Warcraft free reforged content, basically, going over all of the new stuff, all of the pictures, human, orc, undead, models, neutral, you name it. Ah, back to Goganash. So that must be the demons. So let's go back and click on the doodads and extras. We've got a book of summoning to take a look at. Go full screen. Book of Summoning Pedestal. That looks pretty neat. Very Diablo 3-esque. Particularly the book itself looking kind of worn and faded. So this book basically hovers up and down. As I remember the Book of Summoning Pedestal to do so. So that looks on point. No complaints there. These are wooden bridges. They look pretty good actually. They're quite bright. But I don't dislike that, because I prefer the game to have more colorization in it, more sort of vibrancy to it. So it would also help you see the models that are on the bridge too. And obviously that it is a bridge that you can cross over. So it probably helps newer players in the campaign so they don't get confused as to where they need to go. Because there will be bridges to cross. Yep, these are the stone walls. You get vertical forms. They look exactly like the original ones, just higher textured. So those look really on point. I think Nick would appreciate those. Those look just like the originals, basically. They've even got the different iterations of it where they've got like two different... I don't know what to call those. Endings of the stone wall. And then there's one ending and a sort of gap. Master Crafter. A level 13 normal type. Cloak of Immolation. And a sword and shoulder pads. Chain lightning. Holy light. Raw? Is what those spells look like. Although I haven't gone over them myself. That That's probably going to be another video where I go over like maybe the spell icons. Very big map here. We've got the doodad of the sort of like the human barracks by the looks of it. The crates, the barrels, the explosive barrels. They look fantastic. Very real. But at the same time very um, reminiscent of the original models. How they're sort of lined up and positioned. Because I remember a lot of the models. Because I've also done some map editing and map making myself. I know I'm not very good at it. There's no, don't even, don't even go. I'm not very good at it, but I've, I've messed around with the editor. That's what I really got into Warcraft 2 for. I originally got into Warcraft 1 right from the beginning, but Warcraft 2, I remember spending a lot of time in the editor and just pressing the flying machine, the gyrocopter, and just spamming it all over the map. It was just fun to create maps and have millions of units and listening to all the sounds they make. We're looking at the Resurrection Stone at the moment. It's It looks like the Resurrection Stone, but I want it turned a little bit more. So it's more obvious, because it normally has like a blue, teal glowing rune, I think. But you can't really see it here. So it just looks like some boulders. So that needs to be just turned around. We've got the different trees. So you've got the Autumn trees. You've got the Night Elf trees. Uh, the barrels, explosive barrels, some sort of crate slash armor, so you can see the buckle at the front. The cage, where you would typically have someone inside of it, or sometimes not inside of it. The tree stumps, a smaller tree stump, a thicker, wider tree stump, so there's a lot of variation there. Nick says there's two types of res stones. One is turned this way, and one is turned the way you want. Ah, okay, so this is the other type. Right, we're looking at a gate now. The Shimmering Portal is facing the wrong way, but in a way it gives you a good glance of what it would look like from the side too. So that looks like on point. Some of these actually look very reminiscent of the original modelization. The glowing runes outside of it definitely look more HD, whereas the little boulder parts look like they're more similar to the original, which are more sort of kind of blocky. This... I can't remember exactly what this is called. That actually almost looks like it's taken from the HOTS one, where they got the shark in the Booty Bay part map, whatever that map is called. I like the gate. Very solid, very stoic. And it's got like this sort of almost thatched roof in here on this part. The volcano looks awesome. I love how like the fire kind of like almost feels like it's dripping off and it's sort of burning in this section. You've got little boulder parts over and it's very hot at the top. 
Now we got some rock chunks. They look exactly how they probably should do. They actually remind me of the mountain giant. Sort of like this kind of grey stone with like moss growing over it. And again, you've got the uh, the walls. The iron gates. So another version of it. This time with tiling. So that looks really cool. And there's more of a kind of gridded gate. So it gives you different flair. It looks like it belongs in sort of like a worgen area. You know? A different type of city. And here it looks like the throne. Or a smaller version of the throne. Because there's a gigantic version of it. I like the fur draping over it. Makes it more comfy to sit on. And you've got the banners on either side. It's really cool the ideas they come up with for this. Okay, so these are the mushrooms. Those are basically trees on one of the map. They count as trees. That I assume is a tree stump. We've got spiked barricades looking very, very scary. And those got to be spider eggs. Egg sacks, yep. You'd break those and little spiders would come out. We've got massive ruined gates. So you've got elven gate and then this more spiked undead version because it's got skulls on it. So quite threatening indeed, but very different. Blocky and in this kind of semicircled shape rather than more of a I mean they're all semicircled, but it's more of a sharp semicircle with spikes on the top. This is more of a kind of a uh how would you say? More stretched out, less threatening. So the Elven symbolization particularly stands out on the gate. I'm not very familiar with this, but it still looks good to me. I like it. The trees, the little levers. So you've got to hit those to open up bridges or doors, stuff like that. At least in custom games. The trees look fantastic. Like, a, such a different sort of comparison. They've got so much different flair. Like, this is just a small little one. This is a big chunky one, but they look great. The foliage, everything. There's the crates. Right, these are the magical pens. This is what you typically come across when you get to closer to the Blood Elf campaign. Or at least probably there are other sections like in maybe Dalaran or the Dalaran Ruins and stuff like that. Um, but this reminds me of the Blood Elves. Uh, sort of like more their kind of forte. Magical pens, keeping things under control. You got the different... There's no glowing um, spell effect combining between the different pylons. So I don't know if that's going to be added in later on or if that's on a different version. Because you typically have like this kind of binding sort of line of spell going between each of the pylons. And same for this one. This is a broken down one. Hey there guys, how you doing? So again, mushroom tree. Now this looks like sunken ruins. Template. It's a palm tree. And this is like a very different version of a, I assume a palm tree because of the way the leaves are. Oh my goodness. How gorgeous is that? Wow. Okay, so that has got to be like the gate that leads to, say, the Tomb of Sargeras or something like that. You know the Sunken Ruins tile set? Like when you're doing sort of like um, the missions with the Night Elves and you're chasing after Illidan and you're dealing with Naga. I feel like this is the kind of gate type set that you're going to see when you're going into those more ruined Night Elven areas that have risen up from the sea. Because that's how the storyline works. We've got the ruined gates. Yep. So this is... Ah, oh, look, yeah. Look, look, that, that is the door entrance. And what will happen is, is I think that will slide to the left or something. So you'd enter the door. That would slide. And you'd be able to enter through. I think. I'm not 100% sure. But it looks like that. That's really cool. Okay, we got like a boat here that sort of drifted ashore. We've got frozen uh, tree, some North End trees basically. Different colorization. That one doesn't look quite as uh, scary. This one looks more drab because you can see more of the bark. There's less foliage. This one's still okay. The green autumn tree. Look, there's another gate. Oh, these gates are great. They've got so much different personality in each different one. Really thick, chunky sort of door handles. That wooden paneling. And look at this one as well. Super armoured. Like, what is that? Is that like inside of a dungeon or something, that gate? Look at the thick armour on that. Crazy. 
And these are like ice flow chunks. That would be in the Northrend tile set. That looks like a throne. Don't think that's the <laughs> Lich King's throne, but uh, it could be. It's got the chair and everything, but I don't think it is. That's not supposed to be the Lich King's throne, is it? That's just basically a throne in the Northrend tile set. But the spikes in that r remind me of it. It looks like it. The Frozen Throne. Is that the Frozen Throne? It looks cool, if it is. I can't remember it exactly off the top of my head. It looks different from the original models that are kind of in here. But it still looks really good. Some more ice flows. A little igloo. A very small igloo. Who's living in that? Freaking mouse? Okay, so we can see the water effects now. So this is the shore. So you have different tile sets for the water. You have deep water or you have the water that's like the shore where you can sort of run across it. And it looks really cool. It's just kind of glistening off the top. So you know that there's ground underneath for you to walk on because you can clearly see it. But at the same time, you've got these shimmering shapes that indicate that this is water. So you'd come across murlocs and stuff like that that are close to the uh, ocean itself, but hobbled up on the shore. That's a night elf bridge. Thank you very much, guys, for the subs to Etsy and Fainu recently. Now we have a little bit more. That's the old school Warcraft 3 waterfall. That hasn't been updated yet. That one stands out like a sore thumb now in comparison to the detailing of the ships nearby. The sails all sort of torn apart. They look really good. These are little rowing boats. Look at the little bits and bobs inside of it. That looks more like a night elf version or an undead version. That's a ship that's been torn asunder. So that's some flotsam and jetsam. Some sort of like water lilies. Okay, so this is a bit more alien. So... Is this Draenor then? Rock chunks from Draenor. And some more vibrant sort of uh, vegetation from Draenor. Outland rocks. Okay, Frostmourne pedestal. Wow. There it is. So there's Frostmourne clearly. There's the hilt symbol. And then obviously the encasing in ice. So all of these ice um, particles are going to break off and destroy Muradin. Or at least hurt him a lot, because he does actually survive, believe it or not. Um, very nice spiked details. Of course, you've got to have some skulls. I mean, if he doesn't scream evil enough with the spikes, the skulls will do it. Okay, so we've got some rock chunks here. That's just for detailing. Detailing. Oh my goodness. That is in a tower defense map. That's like the skull, skull of Gul'dan, I think. Um, or there's some sort of like building that looks like a giant skull, but I can't remember exactly what it's for. Nick, could you help me out with what its actual name is, if you remember it? But it's basically a tower that fires out sort of like flame bolts that look similar to like the Archmage's attack, but not exactly the same. It's the skull of Gul'dan. Oh, it was the skull of Gul'dan. Well, his skull is massive then, isn't it? But it's basically the symbolization. It's like a building called the Skull of Gul'dan. So what's this? It's like a pedestal where like a skull would be or something like that. I can't remember what exactly it was for, like whereabouts it is. It's meant to hold the skull, but they cut that. So what, is the skull supposed to be here? Anyway, that looks amazing. I mean, wow, look at that. Seriously. That looks so good. It's detailed, but at the same time, everything is really clear as to what it is. Do you see what I mean? That's what I that's what I want. I don't want like the over detailing where you don't even know what anything is. It's like it's, all, it's almost so detailed that it actually makes less sense than if there was no detail on the character. This is a granary, um, a form of it. So seed and grain would be put inside of it. Obviously, it looks pretty corrupted. I think. So I think this is more the kind of case of when Arthur's is investigating. And a hall and places like that, and he finds out that you know things aren't quite right. You have names in name of files you are opening. Yeah, the only downside is, oh yeah, I can see at the top left here now. Thank you very much. Oh well, I, I mean, I feel like I've done a pretty good job of pointing out what everything is for the most part. 
um, without being able to see those now. I've only just seen those now. They're very small and at the top right. Top left, sorry. So I feel like I've done a pretty good job of remembering what everything is. Now that's the Lurch King right there. You can barely see the fella. You can see him a little bit more clearly in the original model. This, it feels like the ice glaciers are prohibiting you from seeing. Like, is that where his face would be? His helmet? But I can't tell whether my brain is putting that picture forward or whether there is actually like a hint of the eye here and the mask. It looks really good though. Very similar to the original. Just harder to see through that ice. Right. Well, these are trees. They look a little bit funny with that sort of terrain underneath them. These are like berries on them and stuff like that. Very weird. Night elf trees. These aren't quite finished. They're the mushrooms. Alrighty. I like those trees. Can we have those, please? Zebra trees. So more frost trees, the sunken temple. This looks like it would be nice in the royal palace gardens or something. You could imagine these sort of being closer to Lordaeron or something like that, near the castles. Sunken temple. Now these are basically the original Warcraft 3 models. I don't think those have been HD-ified. So some of this stuff isn't particularly necessarily finished. Because those look very similar to the original ones. Whereas those are basically where books would be and stuff like that. Those are like for reading tablets and those have definitely been HDified. These are nice. The symbolization. Look at the elven. That almost looks real. It's crazy. So I really like those two in particular. And then there's the Book of Summoning. So we're going to be here a while. but Make sure to stay tuned. Remember to thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't done so already. Taking a look at the human models now. We've seen some of these. That face looks fantastic. Really cool. I like it. So this is Admiral Proudmoore, Dalin Proudmoore, father of Jaina. Uh, you fight against him in the bonus campaign with Rexar. Got the portraits. So some of these, um, they, they have more of a cartoony look now, don't they? Or more of a mobile-esque look. Particularly the Archmage and this peasant, or whoever that character is, like a sort of a knight maybe. So, yeah, I'm liking Admiral Proudmoore. He's, like, got youth, but at the same time, he's more of a veteran. He's slightly more grizzled, more middle-aged. So there's the fire in him, but there's that sort of expertise that he carries. A lot of people got upset I called him a pirate. I didn't... Sorry. I didn't really mean it like he's, a, he's an actual pirate. I just meant the theme is obviously nautical, piratical, you know, ar. But it's... It's clear he's a commander. I know that. He's like the commander of the seas, Kul'Taras, and all that kind of stuff. But, um, yeah, I love the regalia that he has. The sort of like the shoulder pads, the saber, or the cutlass, whatever you want to call that. More of a cutlass. And the flintlock. Not the blunderbuss. Wow. Got a League of Legends hero here. This guy's called Antonidas, but that's not Antonidas. I think that's Anasterian Sunstrider, yeah. I read about him in... Because I read through some of the Warcraft books. I'm basically going through them, like, from the beginning to the end. Like, chronologically, so to speak. And Arthas actually fights this guy. He's the father of Kael Fass Sunstrider, I believe. And can't quite see his weapon properly here. But he looks pretty cool. Very regal. But at the same time, capable of holding his own and fighting if he has to. Alright, the two different versions of Arthas. Apparently picking up Frostmourne makes you taller. So, anyone that wants to grow a couple of inches. And you know we all want to grow a couple of inches. Pick up a Frostmourne. So, you got shoulder pads. Looking a lot more worn out and silvery in this model. You can see sort of like the darker sort of... Um, the darker kind of ebon plating with a more gold symbolization lining his armor. Whereas in this, it's actually brighter, which you would think would make him look less threatening. But in a way, it actually makes him look a bit more drab and macabre, especially with the white hair. So, yeah. He looks pretty cold there, to be honest, in that portrait. <laughs> but it's worth it for the uh, chaos damage. Right. Blood Elf Engineer now. 
I'm busy. As a fan. Um, go to youtube.com slash the as a fan. Um, he does uh, sort of uh, really cool Warcraft free videos. And he covers a lot of Azeroth Wars, which is a custom game. But he does a really good impression of the Blood Elves. Particularly like the engineer and the workers. No, no, no. Not like that. Uh, I can't remember all of their lines, but they're very sort of up themselves and sort of they'll say no 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 let me do this you you go away you go over there kind of let me do it yeah they're he looks cool he looks like he's got attitude like you can see like the eyebrows and you can't see the face detail too well there i feel like it's gone a bit iffy at the bottom part but even just from the eyes i can just tell that there's attitude there and their stance slightly leaning over he's got the scrolls at the back like he knows more than you do all right so the uh Blood Elf Peasant looks a bit more worn down. Like, it's the same model, but because of the clothing, it makes him look more like a scholar compared to this guy who looks like he's more uh, just in it to work for his people. He's more work boots and stuff like that. Blood Elf Lieutenant, really cool model. You know what this reminds me of? You know that you have the footman in Warcraft 3, the original footman, and then the captain, which is basically a bigger, more bulkier looking version of the footman, which has some more decoration. This looks like the Blood Elf version of the Captain for the humans. Really like this. He's not like super big or anything like that, but he's got really nice looking armor. I'd be happy to play that in a custom game, to be honest, as a hero. Like the face. Like, they definitely got their own look. The small shield, but it looks effective. Look at these sort of the knee pads. Very cool. That's um, immunity to spell magic, and that's spell steel. Okay, so we took a look at these models in a previous video, and I was really impressed with these. I love the, diff uh, the different looks of the human paladins. I don't think I can remember all of their names. That's Baros the something. I think that's Halleck the Lifebringer. I think that's Sir uh, Edmondson. That's Dagren the Orc Slayer. Uh, or is that Halleck the Lifebringer? That's Margoth the Defender, sorry. And that's Halleck the Lifebringer, because they have a similar kind of look with the cloak. I think I got most of the names there. Yeah, these are the Campaign Paladins. They just look so damn good. Look at that face. That's really realistic. Like the detailing on that. Kind of scary, really. Actually looks like you're controlling a real person, almost. Wow. I love it. The Archer. I like the portrait particularly. It's got like a kind of innocence about it, but at the same time, she looks capable. You know? Like those big bright eyes, but the sort of like little circlet on the front says that she's sort of like in it to go to war. Like she's more decorated. Sort of like the bright blonde hair, the big ears. She's got the quivers. A very small looking bow. But the armor set is really cool. It's hard to pull off red and teal, but she's managed to do it. Like the kind of this, the sharpness and the liftness of the plates, it fits the body. The hands sort of sticking out. Everything about this is really good. I feel like the face is maybe a little bit more blocky in comparison to everything else, but that probably is just a fact that you have to have it that way for the engine. But otherwise, she's on point. There's the dragon hawk. Oh, wow. Look at his face. He's got like a kind of different... He's got more of a noble-esque face. He rides the skies. He's above you. I like the detail on it. You can't obviously see it very easily because the dragon hawk model sort of like flaps its wings in a really weird way. So you can very rarely get an actual proper T-pose angle of it. But he's got the little lance. He's got the shield. He definitely looks on point. Now, we have the Blood Elf. Not Blood Elf. High Elf, sorry. I think these are High Elves. Very uh, nice looking dress here. Looking very symbolistic with the cuffs. We've got this guy who looks almost like he's ready for a brawl. Okay, we've got the wagon. Very nice symbolization on the front. There's no glowing effect to this wagon, though. The... Unarmed, um, the horse that hasn't actually got a person riding it. Riderless horse. Looking cool. And the mule. With the chest on the side and the barrel on that side. And the rucksacks at the top. 
Very looking, they're very good, very good models. No complaints to that. Okay, so these are the human models all bunched up together. Peasant, footman. Footman actually looks more like a footman there from that angle. Whereas I was a bit afraid that they look a bit too tall. But he's been made to look a bit smaller, I think. Sort of brought down in scale. The priest is really small because they are technically small. And so are the sorks. They're small, smaller units. But they actually look kind of funny here because they look like they're midgets in a way. Because you think the dwarf is supposed to be smaller than an elf and a human, right? But that dwarf is the same height. So they've got a slight issue there. Whereas if they make the priest look too tall, he's not really supposed to be that tall. There's some weirdness going on in the heights. But that could be fixed over time, or hopefully dealt with. It's, it's a hard one to do, though. i got to admit, to get the heights of the characters, but not have them look wrong. Hydromancer is basically another version of the Archmage. But he's more of a, a neutral creep. So he can summon Water Elemental, cast Slow. Uh, it looks like he's got... Is that Polymorph, potentially? It's got a strange symbolization if it is Polymorph. But yeah, he's sort of like um, a character that you would typically fight in a melee game or something like that. So he's more of a Renegade-type wizard. This looks like an Emissary, but I'm not 100% sure. But I like the uh, clothing on it. Oh, Jailer Kassan. So this is cool. You're getting into bandit territory now. The bandits are really cool, the human bandits. He looks really neat. He doesn't look like overly geared. He's not particularly well looked after. But he gets the job done. He's got like mailing. He looks really different. Like the flail. I wonder if the flail sort of like swings around as well. Now here's Jane. Oh, okay. That portrait looks a lot better. I was worried a bit for Jaina. Because if you look at her face in this. it. Yeah, she she looks a bit too old, to be honest. I don't think the detailing on the face comes across very well on the models. At least the sort of design of the clothing stands out a bit more. It's a bit brighter to what I remember. Because she needs to be bright and colourful. And I don't see her back, but I'm pretty sure she had like... Light blue glowies, glows on the back, runes. But she needs to have these big, bright teal slash blue eyes which she has in the original it really makes her stand out oh wow what this is like world of warcraft jaina what okay so this looks like it's going to be something that you could probably buy to be honest with you you know how there's the archmage hero this looks like the female equivalent jaina being the female equivalent of it so basically, she's the Archmage. So you would level up Water Mental, you would level up Blizzard, Water Mental, Brilliance, Aura, Mass Teleport. I could totally see that. She's definitely the Archmage hero. She's got like the same stats, the same health. That is the Archmage. I mean, it says Archmage, but I've, I looked at that bit last. You know, it's, that's definitely the Archmage hero, but Jaina instead. I kind of like it. The face looks quite different to that, though. I mean, that's an older version of Jaina, I suppose. More worn out. More tempered by life. You get it for the deluxe edition. Hmm. Maybe you do. Oh, wow. He looks like Todd. Look at the arrogance in that face. It's fantastic. Looks good. I like it. It's like a, a, an air of superiority. Don't tell him I said that. But, <laughs> it does. It does look a bit like Todd. He looks good. He's a good looking guy. He's got the green eyes. I mean, obviously Todd doesn't have the green eyes. But he's kind of got that strong sort of face. I love it. And obviously the character himself. is like wider. He's got like the pauldrons that stretch out the cape. The arrogance about him. Like his posture. He's ready to fight. But he he's better than you kind of thing. Blood Mage down to a T, to be quite frank with you. Medivh. Wow. So this almost looks like he's been changed portrait-wise. Is it me, or did the other Medivh I look at in the models... He's got a different costume, I think. It's got blood red on the tip of the raven feathers. This looks like an older Medivh. Obviously with the grey beard, but... I'm sure we saw another Medivh that looked younger. So this is the older one. A nice book here, by the way. That's cool. Bit of extra character there. Yeah. 
Very detailed face. He's seen some things. And the beard. He reminds me, um, oh, you know, uh, Arctus Mensk, I think it is, from StarCraft 2. Sort of like that kind of thick, bushy beard, but he's like a powerful human man. Pretty sure that's team colors. Oh, yeah, it could be. That's a good point. That could be just player one. And that's how you identify it. He's got the player one red colors here. So that's a good idea. Oh, yes. Here's Muradin. Yeah, that looks more like it. Look at the portrait. He really bloody well looks like Lord of the Rings dwarfs now. Which is a good thing. I wonder if Grubby's looked at this or not. But... He totally reminds me of Gimli. That face. Like, he's, he's, his face is caked in with a beard, basically. So you can just about sort of make out the details of his eyes and his nose. And that's about it. And his bushy eyebrows. I love the face. That's really cool. Just that beard is just going everywhere. Yeah, his arms are weirdly bent a little bit. I think I agree with you there, Dracknologer. Maybe his arms need to be a bit wider and, like, this bit needs to start from here. They sort of, like, almost curve inward in a strange way. His armor set's really good. His beard's really good. His weapons are really good. I don't really have any complaints otherwise. Just the arms maybe push those outward. Like here, so he looks even stockier because everyone likes the Mountain King being freaking massive and chunky, which he was. He was tiny, but he took up so much of the battlefield because you knew he was there because he was a massive guy. All right. Here are more of the human paladins, just the human characters in general. Arthas looks amazing in that picture. Really good. Look at the hair dangling over. The sort of worn out sort of eyes the the five o'clock shadow very cool that's evil office versus all the paladins put together including himself ah okay so wow we got more models so this looks like the footman equivalent of i mean that's the captain model isn't it because he's got like the same helmet style i think that's the captain model for the humans I don't think that's a Blood Elf one, even though the shield kind of has a weird sort of Blood Elf symbol on it. I don't know what that symbol is, but it looks very much like a phoenix. But anyway, that reminds me of the human captain. It's the elven captain, is it? So this, what, who's this guy then? Because he's like an elven version of a footman kind of thing. He's got a shield, he's got a sword. I love the armor. I wish the Blood Elf spellbreakers had more of that kind of solid plate in armor that these characters do. Maybe they do when we get round to it, or if we can see it again. He's from the campaign. Okay, so he is a Blood Elf. It's just because you can't really see the face. The prison one. Yeah, I mean, these look amazing. Good job on those. I love the, I love their armor. Oh! Sylvanus. Hello. Looking a bit better here. Maybe the brightness, because it's a new dawn of a new day. It's about to break out, so we can see a little bit more color in her. More of a skin tone. Less undeadish. Still pretty dark, the clothing. And I know people said, oh, she's a ranger. She's supposed to be dark. But it's a video game, okay, guys? Let's not get too bogged down by realism. They're not wearing camouflage, are they? If they want to be really freaking realistic and blend into the trees, they'd be wearing camouflage, every single model. So we want them to look like fantasy characters. And her face is very dark. Weird, in a way. Almost looks a bit too old, to be honest with you. Like, she looks like she's got tight lips. Her eyes look a bit sore. But her eyes are bright, at least. I like that part, but I think her face looks a bit too old, to be honest with you. But the colorization's a bit brighter. The teal helps, but maybe the back could be a bit brighter. Maybe if you just made the cape itself, like, a light teal as well, I think that would help make her look... Let's eagle. That almost looks like a dwarven face, though, doesn't it? That's got to be a human face, right? It says captain. That has to be the human captain, because it's an alliance insignia. I said that was a human captain. And you guys were yapping on about the blood elf. Maybe that's the cut. That's what you meant. That that's the blood elf captain. But anyway, yeah, that's a human with a kind of a dwarf face. There's Ufa. I like the uh, picture. He's very 
veteranistic, very serious and pious, which he is known to be. He's got his hand on the book. He's got his uh, hammer, the giant shoulder plate. He looks very. He, he looks. He looks on point. I oh, no complaints with Uther really. Very good. And then we're back to Admiral Proudmore. Oops, let's come back. This is going to go on a while. I have no idea. I knew this was going to be long. I've got to be a bit quicker, I think, to be honest. All right, taking a look at the Naga. Right, Temple of Tides. We have the worker unit, maybe, or at least the initial fighting unit. So they've got completely different models. The armor upgrades look exactly the same, though, or if not, just slightly more hd -ified, which is fine. I don't know if that's the little creature that pops out and it's a tower basically it looks like it is like the defense tower look like you got some naga here that looks like a myrbidon there you go there's the coral bed that's basically their food structure these look cool they look exactly like they should do they're very similar very similar to the foundation of the original models just made to look newer so yes i like those because they completely represent what the originals did and that's what i want this to do we've all got scared by looking at some of the models and going is this really warcraft 3 anymore yes it is but at the same time they don't really look like warcraft 3 that's what i was really worried about i want them to just retain the essence of what it originally was and then you can slap on some new new paint and stuff Yep, that's uh, where you get the corals. Oh, wow. Serena Scar Scale. So we've seen this model before because it's the same hairstyle. She looks incredible. Like, very, very pretty. Very fierce and deadly as well. So she's the sea witch. Ah, there's the coral. And there's the little murloc fighter. That looks like a snapdragon, but it looks really small because it's really crouched. So you can't quite see the proper length of it. But that should be a Snapdragon. Yeah, that's a Naga Royal Guard. That's the Myrmidon, sorry. Yeesh. They look quite horrific. They no longer look cute anymore. I really liked my Naga. They look so cute. Oh. I mean, it's good. Don't get me wrong. It looks beautiful. Like the armor, the shoulder plates, the sort of like the webbing. It's, it's a beautiful model. It's a little bit on the thin side, but I'm okay with that because maybe they're going for more of a serpentine theme, you know, more snake-like, more life, rather than these big, really hulking, wide characters. But originally, the Warcraft 3 versions of them are pretty freaking wide, but they still got muscles and everything, so they still ooze that they are, you know, they're strong characters. So it's, I'm not too against them being looking this way and not being wider. I'm just used to them looking wider because they do in the original game. The weapons are very interesting. That is what the weapons basically look like. They're freaking massive, scary things. Naga Royal Guard. Look at him. He's terrifying. The portrait looks like some horrible dragon lizard. I really... My favorite icon portrait is the Naga Myrmidon. It's the first one you get for winning 25 games as random. And that's it. I've got Illidan model. I've got a lot of them. But that's the best one. It's the very first one you get for winning as random. 25 games. And they're no longer going to look like that. I'm not going to have that cute looking Naga. Because they got like a little cheeky smile. Like a really cheeky grin. In the original Warcraft 3. Whereas they're going more horrific. With these kind of realistic graphics. Which I'm not a big fan of. I'm going to accept it. But I'm not a big fan of. Which is why I haven't been so favorable towards the undead models. A lot of people like them. I personally don't because I kind of prefer the more kind of somewhat comical but more kind of characteristic and approachable undead that Warcraft 3 initially has. The ghouls, the abominations got a kind of almost a cute look to them. They still look like they're monsters but they got like a kind of a cute fun look. These new ones look like they're from a horror movie which I feel is a little bit not truly in the setting of Warcraft which is slightly more comical and cartoony originally anyway if you go back to the original games what do I think about Naga as the fifth official race in this game I don't think Blizzard are going to do that unless they do that later on I mean they basically are they got their own models they got their own race you can play as them in the campaign 
in the Frozen Throne campaign. They pretty much are a playable race anyway. They're just not quite balanced, so to speak. Obviously, Naga Royal Guards being completely broke. So, this Murloc looks vile. He looks like he, you would get a disease if you even stroked him. This is Lady Fash. She looks not like Lady Fash to me, to be honest. I feel like this model needs more work. The lower part of the body is pretty much finished. That looks good. The upper body could be a little bit more detailed. Shoulder plates aren't too bad. Remember, this is like an in-game model, though. It's not a cinematic. She's got the big bow. So that part looks good. The head is like a good effort. The snakes are really probably hard to model and actually get right. So they're not a bad attempt. But I'm not in love with the face. I don't feel like that looks much like her, to be honest. And is that a Naga Siren? If it is, she's really big, because the Naga Sirens aren't typically bigger than a hero model, but that has to be, because she's got the stretched out sort of like hair webbing, hair face. I don't know what you would call that. That looks bloody good, but I'm not a huge fan of Lady Fashes. It's the summoner model. Okay. Hello there, Kim Sweden. Okay, so Temple of the Tides. So we're back to the original. Okay, so we're getting there. Because I've got to speed this up a little bit, I apologize. Because there's... I've barely even scratched the surface. So, okay, we're going to take a look at the Arachnids now. These look really cool. Very scary. Almost spider-esque in their sort of pose. They look very scary. They're, they're like the closest I would want it to be. Where you breach in that kind of cute cartoony slash to horrific realistic. Where I feel like quite a lot of the models, particularly the undead models, have gone too far this way. These feel like they're about here. Like closer towards the horrific, but still got a kind of like a cute bouncy look to them. Where they've got their own characteristic. They, they very obviously look like their own model, you know. And these have got like a crystalline spike on them. Very cool. I'm a big fan of those. The face looks a bit horrific, though. Like, uh, more like something out of StarCraft 2. That could look a bit less horrific. Okay, so here we have the Bandit Mages. So, really neat. Those two are just basically the same model, just scaled up. This one is actually different. It's more like an emissary on a horse. So he's far more basic. I really like those. I like the horns. Like, look at the faceplate on the horse's head is a little bit fierce. Just got to put the... I'm going to try to soundproof because someone's just about to do hoovering in the background. So you might hear some hoovering. I can't do much about that. It's going to be going on for like the next 20 minutes at least. So anyway, I'll just try to talk loudly and into the microphone. So we've got these three models. Uh, Bandit Lord... Oh my goodness, he looks really different. He's got the Devotion Aura, Defined Shield, and Shadow Meld. Which I'm glad the Shadow Meld looks more like the Night Elf model. Because I hope they change that back. The new model keeps throwing me off. It looks like a High Elf hiding in bushes. Because basically you can Shadow Meld during the day now. At least not Shadow Meld during the day. If you've got the Cloak of Shadows item, it allows you to Shadow Meld during the day. Um, I actually got thrown off by that because I'm so used to the original one being sort of like in, at night. I, I surrounded this guy's hero and waited for it to turn daytime. And then when he didn't appear, I got mega confused. Like, how did he do that? Did he town portal? And I just sort of like looked at somewhere else on the map and then came back and he wasn't there. But then I watched the replay and he just moved out because I moved thinking, oh, well, it doesn't display him. So he's either gone or I can't see him anyway. And then he just walked out. I was like, ah, oh, because I... Some of the recent changes, I don't play that much one versus one, so it threw me off. Anyway, these look ban freaking tastic. I am a big fan of these. First time seeing these, really like all of them on first glance because they are all very different, but at the same time, very similar. You look at each of these and you go, they are all freaking ragtag bandits. Perhaps the latter two look more barbarianistic and like Viking if that's a proper term, which it isn't. But basically, you look at these and you know that these aren't like part of the official guard of Stormwind or Lord Rom. They're basically ragtag humans that will make your day really bad if you bump into them. 
in the wrong place at the wrong time. So, yes. Big fan. That's like a, the standard bandit. Look at the shoulder pads. It's kind of like this rocky kind of look. He's got the wooden buckler. He's got the axe. This guy's got more of a kind of a small short shield. And it looks like a staff. So that's completely different fighting style. Axe to short shield. Stockier. This guy is a spearman, obviously. He chucks the poison spears, potentially. This guy is, uh, as was mentioned, Kratos by Sweet Account uh, Pros. <laughs> it's a level 2 sp spear bandit guy. Yeah. Um, so we got Kratos over here. He looks freaking scary, man. If you... If you were even like, if you even look, he's got a skull on where his freaking leg is. Like, what is? Do not cross across this guy. What are you doing? Also, the devotion aura has got this kind of strange, kind of misty look to it. Not sure I'm too much of a fan of that. The original devotion aura has more of a bright blue glow. Although I'll have to see how it looks properly. But anyway, this guy's got this big old shield chained along his back. I don't know what the hell. This weapon is... Is that an axe? That's like a kind of axe that's weirdly shaped. He doesn't look like he's got like a shield. I think it's just his hand here. And the horse is very armoured. So the original Bandit Lord looks basically just like Garifoss or the Knight. So this is a very different take on the Bandit Lord. Which is a good thing because it was a bit strange that these guys would be bandit lords, but they'd actually look like noblistic knights, so to speak. So, that's a good change because it basically lets you know that they are bad guys. Okay, so here's Chen Stormstout. Face is very serious. He no longer retains that kind of happy-go-lucky cute fat face that he had with the fun hat. And I think a lot of people want to see that back. So perhaps Blizzard might need to make a model where we can unlock it so you can get the hat back and maybe a sort of more smiley looking Chen. Because that's Chen. More realistic to the World of Warcraft Chen. But he's very serious. Almost too serious. But otherwise everything else about the model is great. Like I love the barrel. I love the clothing. I just love the style of it. That Asian look. It's beautiful. Like the gold encrusted tip of the spear. Like the handle part. The wooden bamboo. It just looks fantastic. The beard. The, the hair like... But obviously everyone wants the hat back and the more fluffy looking Chen. Oh, we got Plague Treants. They look really different to your standard Treants. They are horrific monsters. But I'm okay with this because they're supposed to look like that. Because they're freaking Plague Treants. They're basically evil Treants. And yes, you might say, well, the undead are evil and they're supposed to look horrific. I, I, I still want the undead models because they're playable to look more cartoony and approachable because I'm going to be using those all the time whereas a character like this is going to be more specific or niche the selection scale is a bit weird though perhaps their legs are pushing out too far because the original treant model is very much like a rectangle so I think when they've remodeled over this and re-rendered over this they've given it a lot more sort of actual character but it doesn't actually fit in with the scaling so I'm not sure how that's going to look when it's moving around on the map Disease Cloud and I think Entangle. Very good. These are some speeders. They got Envenomed Spears and a web. That definitely looks like a spider, although it's kind of hard to tell by the portrait. And the character models are pretty good from what I can tell of the picture. Those all look like spiders to me from a distance. So, yes, we've got basically the sort of Thunder Lizards, Murlocs with little buckler shields. Nick will be happy to see that these shields have been properly rendered. The original shields actually have like some of the old, uh, some of the block textures that haven't been actually um, cut out, so to speak. PNG style, where you can actually see through them. They're just kind of like a block attached to the actual shields. That looks like a kind of dragon, uh, maybe a neutral dragon. I think that's a Furbolg, Furbolg, Troll Warlord potentially, Troll Shadow Priest, Troll Axe Thrower, Troll Axe Thrower, yeah, another Shadow Priest, Satyr, Satyr, Female Draenei slash Satyr, and I'm not sure what that is. 
Dalaran Mutant. Wow. So that looks more symbolistic of the zombie. Except this one's got a lot more flair to it. I'm okay with it because they're trying to go for something here. The blocky parts look kind of funny. And not quite as hyper detailed as some of the models. They look more obviously blocky. But again, I don't have a problem with that graphics wise. It does stand out a little bit. But it doesn't bother me. I kind of like the attempt that they put in here. Okay, so here we do have the Dark Trolls. So yeah, that looks like probably a Trapper. That looks like an Axe Thrower. Big Shadow Priest, small Shadow Priest. I guess that's like a Berserker slash Axe Thrower, and that's the Warlord. They all look freaking cool. They look a lot more serious and darker though, but they still look like Trolls. And they're more symbolistic of the beefy Trolls. And you've got some skinny versions as well, so it gives some flavor. That looks like a Gul'dan model, the way he's sort of like posed there. But I don't like uh, dislike it. I think it still works for what their tribalistic look is uh, supposed to be. And the arm plates, the spikes coming out are pretty incredible. Okay. Oh my god, look at Akama's face. It's right up in your face. The portrait, look at the little icon there. Yeah, that's like a broken Draenei. They look horrific, all cowed over. So these are the Draenei models. So those are the little fighter ones that you can get. That looks like the priest one. That looks like the one that can cast immolation. This guy is some sort of healer type one. That's a bigger healer. That's the one that probably has like um, brilliance aura and healing wave. And this guy is like a bigger version of the one that can do immolation. And that Akama is very similar to the World of Warcraft Akama. The pose, the armor setting. You can't quite see because he has like permanent cloaking. And we've got the buildings behind, which are very ritualistic and symbolistic of the Draenei. They're broken, sort of like case of the official Draenei, which are more sort of regal in appearance or more... Um, Runistic. I don't know exactly the right words to put forward for this. So either way, those buildings work for me because they look very different to other buildings. That almost looks like a kind of centaur tent, but obviously it's got that kind of purple gem Draenei look going on. We've got the dragon spawn now. So these look pretty different to the dragon spawns that we know. The dragons in the new Warcraft 3 Reforged have more of a kind of a spiky, aggressive, triangular, angled face, which I don't dislike. But it is going to take a little bit of getting used to. They are definitely more lizard-like. Which these kind of should be. Even though they're technically they're dragons. But they've got more of a kind of a lizard sort of angled face. To them. So you're just going to have to kind of get used to that. The original Warcraft 3 models are a little bit more rounded. they still got like the pointy snouts. But they're more sort of rounded and kind of cuter looking. These are a bit more scary. So... Dragon Spawn, the different types. I don't remember these ones so well, but the models look good. The armor setting. I feel like I need to blow my nose in a moment. Oh dear. Excuse me. A good time to remind you to thumbs up the video. If you still haven't done so already, smash that like button and subscribe. Seriously. Like, come on, help me out. Alright, so there's a genie in a bottle. This is the Berserk Elemental and another version of the Water Elemental. Very, very different to what I think of when I think of the Elementals. Really different. No, Nacro, not how about no. If you're on Twitch, come over, say hi. I stream Twitch as well. Twitch.tv slash witty where I'm actually streaming this right now and then putting this onto YouTube. Um, come say hi. Subscribe if you've got Twitch Prime. It's for free. And just... Have a good time. I stream 12 to 2 o'clock UK time. So 1200 to 1400. Uh, Monday to... Uh, sorry, Tuesday to Sunday. So, yeah. They look like the Archon model from like StarCraft 2. Thank you, Komodo Jesper, for the sub. Can we see the gallery as well? Uh, I don't know if I can get around to that. Thank you, by the way, Screw the Trees, for the tip. Uh, the 100 bits, he said... Looking at all the in-game screenshots of models I posted in Hive Chat. Ah, yeah, oh, it's you, is it? Thank you. So, look at these giant claws. Really weird models. It's hard to really have a complaint because the other ones basically just look like water elementals. Just slightly bigger with slightly more depth on their braces. 
So, okay, I guess. And that looks like a kind of a stone golem. That looks really cool. So I'll, I'll go with the different look here. Oh, wow. Wow. These are the faceless ones. Yeah, their face is obviously a bit faceless. Like, it looks a bit slimy and murky here. Looks like it almost needs to be a bit more detail. Ironic, because I don't want that much detail. And yes, they don't really have a face, so they shouldn't have detail. But I guess it should be more symbolistic, or it should be more obvious at what I'm looking at. If you look at that in first glance, you're just looking at a blob. You don't know, what, is that the eye? Is that the nose? What am I looking at? Yes, they don't have a face. They don't have nose, mouth, all that. Yes, 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 yes. I know. Don't, don't, don't write that down. Just trust me on this. When you look at the original models, you can sort of see the face itself clearer. So... They've got the really thick tendrils that they have in, like, the World of Warcraft. Much more threatening. Much more symbolistic of the old gods. I like the differences between them. They've got the same sort of model, but they've got completely different looking skin to kind of differentiate them. Like, the glowing sort of almost looks like a scars on here. This guy's got more spikes, the shoulder plate. It looks good. Those look good to me. Look at the sleep. Is that Arcus? Is that Arthas's? Is that someone taking a picture of Arthas when he's asleep? And that's Man of Shield. Where'd you get all those leaks? This is HiveWorkshop.com. Uh, we got the Fire Lord and the Lava Spawn. No! It looks like freaking Hydralisk from StarCraft 2. Uh, I assume that might be work in progress, though. So I'm not going to criticize too much. I'm just going to say that that does not quite look like what I think it should look like. It looks like a kind of a demon slash dragon lizard type thing snaky like the original lava spawn never really looked good anyway i'm aware of that even the fire lord himself i've said this before they don't look that good so i'm this is a model that i think i'm going to get used to and actually eventually like but for the time being it still feels very alien to me because it's quite different to the original even though the original really doesn't look that good when you look at it it's just going to take some getting used to. This, I don't feel like I want to get used to that, though. Oh, there it is again. There's a very fat-looking panda, but still bulky. So a different model of it. So that's cool. Oh, what the hell is this? An ancient construct? This looks like it's being ported from a different game, to be honest with you. Very weird-looking model. It looks like it's come from Warhammer or something. Is this a different game now? It's a flesh golem. It's cool, but it feels like it's been more like it's created by the community in a way. Do you know what I mean? Like where I've played some custom games where you've got like different versions of models or models that are taken from Heroes of Might and Magic 5, etc. Yeah, he's got some pretty crazy damage and armor. I don't think that's supposed to stay in the game. His face is kind of cool. It just needs to be a bit brighter so you can see it more clearly. But he's got this kind of like iron jaw sort of strapped around him. The teeth look kind of vicious and bloody. The dead eyes staring at you. HD mountain giant in the back. Oh yeah, they can't quite see those very clearly. They don't. They look like the original ones though. Very similar. Okay, so basically, I, I this is one of those ones where I like it and I don't like it. I don't know whether it. It's a really interesting take, very different, but it almost feels like it's been ported from another game. So it's kind of weird to me. Okay. Furbolg Digger. Look at the face on this guy. Very different to the faces that we see in the original Furbolgs. But still bear slash dog like, so it still works. And they definitely look like Furbolgs, similar to World of Warcraft. But, you know, they've got this kind of big furry bear look, but they're more sort of like they're more humanistic. So they're pretty much on point. I think those are pretty good looking. And they've got different styles here. That's a more war style bear. This is the caster one, obviously. It's draped in sort of more furs and cloaking, and it's got his little ears sticking out of the holes. It's got a little beard as well. These like these feathers, that sort of ritualistic, tribalistic look. Those definitely work for me. That's the goblin merchant. It almost looks too detailed. In a way, I feel like it needs more outline. So what I mean by that is maybe darker shading or something that makes it stand out on the outside of it. So it looks more like a separate building than something that's almost blending or melding into the actual background itself. Maybe I sound crazy when I say that. Maybe you understand exactly what I mean when I say that. I just 
this building looks amazing. It just needs something like to outline it a little bit and make it stand out. Oh wow. So here's the sappers. I wanted to put this as part of a, like a quiz that I'm going to work on. And maybe I still will because perhaps you might end up forgetting. But we got three actual sappers. And I never realized that. When I played this game for the lo longest time, I always thought it was just two. But when I actually looked at the model like a couple of months ago in Warcraft 3, I noticed that there's this little one in the barrel as well. So technically, there's three goblin sappers that blow themselves up. But I always thought the barrel, even though it moved with them, I thought it was just kind of like a contraption. I didn't actually think it was a goblin inside of the barrel until I actually looked at the model properly. They look really good. Each character. They're really cool, aren't they? Like They're like the mortar team. They've got each of their own different type of personalities, but they're all bound together. The shredder looks really fucking... Sorry, excuse my language. Um, really sort of strange and weird. I think I'm going to have to get used to that because I'm so used to the original model. I like it, though. It's got the big spiky, stompy boots. It would trounce up and down. You would be able to hear it in the forest from miles away. It's got that face guard, uh, uh, like on the chest piece that it typically has. It might need some scarier looking eyes, though, that stand out. It's got the saw. It's got the shoulder plaids with the spike. The guy operating it, though, looks like he's half asleep. So he needs to be more like that sort of pushing levers I think then sort of like with his hands on his sort of like his legs oh wow okay it's the Fantastic Four or Fantastic Three they look like superheroes what on earth those are very different to the uh, rock golems that we have the rock golems are very basic in Warcraft 3 very very basic models this is a mud golem. That's the rock golem. That's the granite golem. I actually really like these. You might not like it. I think they look really cool. They just don't look anything like their original. But I could get behind them. I feel like they'd be a really cool character to play in a custom game. Particularly this last one. I mean, look at him. This guy just looks freaking comical. He's totally up for a fight. And this guy's like super proud of himself. I mean, the face is scary as all hell. Perhaps if the Infernals look more like this, to be honest, than that weird-looking Infernal that we saw earlier. Alright, we got dragons. Green dragon flight. I like the whelps looking more baby-like, so that's nice. They've got little tiny horns. This kind of stretched webbing that doesn't look like it's quite grown into a proper wing yet. They look a bit more similar to fairy dragons. Now, the drakes are actually, I think... They might be different models. I couldn't tell because when I saw dragons before, I couldn't tell whether the big ones and the drakes are like the same model, just different scales. Because I think that's how they are in Warcraft 3. The original. But I don't know if Blizzard have made the drakes different to the actual dragons. Because they still look very similar. But maybe the dragons have got more sort of decorations around the um, mouth area. More horns, that kind of thing. More spikes. So I think there is a different model. Yeah, in this case, it definitely looks like a different model. But in previous pictures of the dragons put together, like a drake and then the adult version, the dragon. Um, yeah. That's definitely different. I like it, though. The dragon looks beefy as all hell. Super scary. Oh, wow. We've got hydras now. So the portrait's kind of a weird one to look at. I'm not sure what to make of that. I quite like the scariness. And sort of like the detailing on them. But they do look weird. I think I like this one the most. I feel like this one settles in and looks more hydralistic. Like the three heads are sort of separate, but at the same time they're close enough. I feel like that one's kind of cool as well. So like those ones pushing out. This one, it almost looks a bit blocky and chunky in a way. But I still like them. I'm not saying I don't like them. I just feel like this one fits the hydra theme the most, I think. Hydra is unfinished. Yeah. Bear in mind, like I say, oh, oh, some of this stuff could be unfinished. Maybe all of it is unfinished. I don't know. I'm not sort of like on the team. I'm just giving my critique as I see it. So these are like the ice trolls. So the smaller trapper troll, sort of like the priest. Actually looks different to the bigger priest here. The bigger priest, I think this is the higher level priest. But he's actually kind of smaller than the shadow priest, which is kind of weird. This is like the cheaper one. Uh, that looks like a trapper. 
So he would be the one that nets you. That's the axe thrower, and that's the war. The warlord looks scary as hell. And I like that they're different to their dark troll counterparts. The faces are very different. The actual um, armor that they wear, the style of it, is furry. Look, they got furs on them and everything. Ice Revenant. The portrait could be potentially really cool. I like the shaping of the helmet. I just can't really see it very clearly or easily. It's one of those ones where it looks like the model has too much detail. That's obviously the shield blocking the most of his body. It looks really cool. But I almost need to see it with the shield to the side. Unless that's how it always looks in a standard forward pose. The weapon is really nice. The weapon's lovely here. The shield there. The draping gown. Like, everything about these has good potential. I'm just a little bit worried that they're almost too detailed in a way that I actually can't make out the basic geometric shapes. Oh, how cool are these? That must have been what I saw a glimpse of. Wow. These remind me of World of Warcraft. These are like um, dark iron golems or something that they created in uh, Black Rock Depths or something. These are very clear. Yeah, like Nick says. These are very obvious. The shaping. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Top marks on these. Like, they're detailed, but they're very clear shapes. That's what I prefer. I prefer it to look very obvious as to what it is. But it's still got enough detail that it gives the characters character. Really cool. Oh, wow. Wow. Jungle Stalkers. What the hell are these? Aren't these supposed to be the Sasquatches? But they're obviously supposed to be different. Maybe Blizzard at the time when they created it. They created Jungle Stalkers, but they used the Sasquatch model. They're bog creepers in this, though. Yeah, they're like World of Warcraft bog creepers. So maybe they wanted them... They used Sasquatches, but they wanted them to actually look different. Oh, I didn't understand that. I just thought they were different form of Sasquatch. Green ones, basically. Look at the mushrooms on the top. The spiky kind of, like, almost vegetative hands... Really cool. Really cool. I love those. New models. Magnetar Destroyer. What the hell's going on with that one? What happened to his face? And this one you can't really see too well. Because obviously, like, when the screenshots are taken, the characters are doing their own little animations. But this one. This one I like. <laughs> the portrait's pretty hilarious. That's obviously way too zoomed in. Um, that looks incredible. Look at the detailing on his face, the grimace. He's like a centaur guy. Giant tusks, massive axe. Very cool. Very cool. I like these, actually. Oh, wow. Witty eats lobster. I'm not eating that one. I might eat this one, though. Perhaps that one? So yeah, these are um, the Lobstrocks, the Tidal Lords, that kind of stuff. Macrora. So they look on point. They're obviously a lot more horrific than their original cuter look in Warcraft 3. I mean, look at the detailing on their shells. It's quite incredible, actually. It's like different shades and colorization. Look at this. Like, it looks really realistic, actually, this claw. It looks like it could actually grip something and do some real damage. They look pretty incredible, i got to say. They're really good. And they're all very flavorful with their different colorization. And the thing I like, what they've done with the models and the luxury, is they've not just... What's happened with a lot of the original Warcraft 3 stuff is the models get updated. Or so much... Like, there's two different models. Uh, there's two different characters. One's a smaller one, one's a stronger type version. But it's just basically a bit bigger. And this, they've made them slightly bigger... But they've put slightly different spikes in different places or more of a kind of elongated head, spiky sort of like top part or the claw is a little bit bigger or looks more angled and the colors different. So they've put a lot of effort into these models. Wow, these are mammoths. They look a lot more like the World of Warcraft mammoths, I think. They are quite different indeed. They're more like a, yeah, Raphael the Lich King mammoths, I think. They look more tribalistic, very um, tundra style. So 
They're not like the elephants that you sort of would think or the more lengthy looking uh, mammoths that we have in Warcraft 3 that look more like elephants with big tusks. These have got more of their own unique personalized look and I quite like it. They're more stubby but at the same time they very much look like their own characters so I quite like those to be honest. Now, this is where it gets a bit weird. These are Murgles. They're like an, op, uh, like an off form of the Murlocs. So when you get the Sunken Temple um, ruins and that kind of template, you have the Murlocs or the Murgles that belong to that. They're slimier. They're more amphibious. They've got sharper, pointier teeth. Look at the spikes on this guy. Their coral and their shells are more outstanding. This guy's got like a giant skull on front of him. They look pretty cool. Ah, and the Rubians. Horrific looking things. Definitely way more like the World of Warcraft than the Rubians. What are these legs? These are like something from... Like World of Warcraft Legion or BFA. Like these spider legs. I don't remember them having that in Warcraft 3. Not looking like that at all. They looked just more like the original spider fiends, crypt fiends, basically. I like it, though, because it it separates them from looking like normal crypt fiends. Because basically they were all just crypt fiends. Just slightly different or slightly more decorated. These are... These are... These are way more unique and way more identifiable as a particular type of race. They're pretty scary as well. So where the crypt lord comes from, basically. Nice. We've got a flying sheep that's being highlighted over here. So weird, the flying sheep. Like the portraits over here. That looks like um, a Naga hero that's a male hero, which is unusual. So that could be a campaign one or a bonus one that we get. Because I don't remember there being a male Naga hero other than like a custom model that you would get off Hive Workshop or something. You say it's not male. That looks like a male face to me. Maybe the um, one part is... Males don't have fins on their face. Are you sure? Like the Myrmidons don't have face. It's a Naga trap. Maybe. The male equivalent of the Sea Witch. Yeah, that's what I think it might be. White Wolf Sunday. Thank you very much there for the Twitch Prime sub. Much appreciated. So these are basically the Murloc huts. There's um, Patrick. Is it Patrick from uh, <laughs> SpongeBob SquarePants? I think that's his name. I never really watched Sponge SpongeBob SquarePants, but I appreciated the cartoon because I I wish I did watch it when I was a kid, but I just never had it as a kid. Um, these little huts, little uh, sort of are those Drani huts potentially? I'm not exactly sure who they all belong to. Oh wow, these are horrific. So these are Murlocs that have essentially been plagued. They look like the treants that we saw earlier, the plague treants, if you can remember those. And they are really different to the plague bearer that I see in Warcraft 3, which basically just looks like a Murloc pretty much, another Murloc model. These are these are like something from Diablo 3. Bogdanites or some sort of weird creature that lives in swamps. Cool. They look cool. He's got like a rounded kind of club. This guy's got more of a sword. Weird, right? You think that's a fish? I don't think that's a fish. I just think that's kind of like a silvery rock style club. Right. Now we have the polar fobolgs. So furbolgs, much like the... Um, Dark trolls or ice trolls. You've got different variations of them. And as you can see, these ones look freaking great. Look at all the sort of like the fur, the armor. Look at this guy. He's got like the spiked fur, the shoulder pad like an orc. Like he's very different. He's very much like an orcish gladiator, this one. And this guy is just a freaking beast. The claws on top of his claws. He's got like bunny rabbit sort of like feathers that kind of like look quite funny. And he's got multiple hair chunks that will come up. And he's got these spiked shoulder pads that look very unusual but very unique. We don't normally see spiked shoulder pads looking like that. So, wow. Really cool. 
Yeah, that's the Ursa one, yeah. And that's the other Ursa. Wow. Red Dragon Roost. Ooh. Yeah, the original Warcraft 3 um, Dragon Roost were basically the dragon model kind of curled around a stone. So that's what this is. This looks kind of horrific, though, in a weird way. Like, where's the rest of that dragon? Like, there's the front part of it. Is it kind of curled around? Around the back that we can't quite see? It's got the different eggs. 333 seconds, 813 seconds until you're... So there's the countdown timer that you have now, which makes it more clear when something's going to become available, which is a big boost, I think, because you didn't really have that in the original Warcraft 3. You just had to kind of go off the actual timing of the days. If you knew them really well, it would be like 1,900 game time and 1,400 game time, that kind of thing. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, it's, it's different, it's unique. I don't know if it looks a bit too weird, though. Like, it looks more like a statue than it... I know it's a building, because it's supposed to be a building. It's not really supposed to be a unit, but... Something odd about that. Rexar? I like Rexar. I think the portrait, he looks quite grizzled. He is fairly old, though, to be fair. At the same time, he's kind of supposed to be young in Warcraft 3. But, um... I feel like he looks a bit... Yeah, he's got Tarzan vibe because of the stripes on his legs. I wish he was just bigger and bulkier. It sounds strange because he does look big. I just want him to be even bigger, even wider. There's something... Yeah, maybe more width. There's something about him that just doesn't vibe right with me. I don't feel like I'm playing as him. As I do like with the Warcraft 3 version. We've got Salamander Lords. So these are the Salamander different types. They look freaking amazing. Really different. Little stubby horns here. Then you got big old spiky horns. And then this dude is like fully grown. He's got the Stegosaurus spikes. He spits out. He can devour. can immolate. Rain of fire. Because I remember a lot of the abilities. Because I played Warcraft 3. You know, the channel's been around a long time. I've been playing this game since it came out. And I've been doing YouTube for like... What was it? Five years on this channel, but probably more like nine to ten years in total, because I had it on the original Witty One channel. Yeah, I've been doing this a while. Saffron. Really unique looking face here. That sort of dark brown weird horn coming off. Very odd. Maybe it's to more symbolize the eventual undead look, because you can imagine this looking more decayed when it becomes undead. I think this is before Saffron is turned undead, though. Obviously, because it's not looking very skeletal. It looks quite muscular at the moment. Definitely unique and different to the other dragons. Sea giants. They they look like grunts. Like fatter... Something between a grunt and a dwarf. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing. Their faces always did look a bit weird. I love the octopus on top of this guy. I can't remember the original guy had an octopus on him as well. Maybe he did. It's just less detail. This guy's got like a kind of a shark on the top of his head. The purple beard. All the starfish and stuff within their beard. They look cool. They look really cool. They got like a bigger belly, but they're still really strong. They had some kind of hood. Yeah, that's right. They, had, they were wearing a, like a hood. Shark hood. We got the Deep Lord Revenant. Okay, so you got like... I think this is still obviously unfinished. It needs more of a kind of a glow within the mask. But I feel like the outline is there for the Revenant. It looks like an Orc Warlord kind of helmet. Which is how it kind of looked. The original ones. They have a really cool, ethereal, ghost-like look to them. The shield in front of them is just something I've got to get used to. They did kind of have a shield in front of them in the original Warcraft 3, but it felt like it was slightly more to the side. More like this guy. So, the, the, their whole kit, they got like separate things. The weapon, the shield, the draping gown, the helmet. But it feels like it almost blends in just a bit too much. It's just a bit too busy with their posture. But they do look gorgeous. Oh, Cyrenox. That's more of a Deathwing looking character, that is. Yeah, he looks like he'll bite you. He looks cool. So, you fight him, I believe, at the bottom right of the map in one of the early human campaigns, where you have to fight first as the Black Rock Blade Master, and you play as Ufa and Arthas, and you go get some riflemen and go take care of um, 
the dragons that are bothering the riflemen at the bottom right of the map. Oh, wow. Sea turtle or hatchling. It looks quite gross, to be honest, but I don't dislike it because I feel like the turtles are going to look very different to one another. They don't look anywhere near as cute as the original. The, the original Warcraft 3 turtles are really cute. Really cute. Just take a look at them. They're, they're really cute. But, um, yeah. This looks like a baby one should look. So this is the first initial easy to kill one. So hopefully we can see the other ones. Skeletal Orc Champion. Wow. So those look like Orc Grunts, which I assume is what they're supposed to look like because the original Warcraft 3 models look like Orc Grunts, basically, but skeletal form. So I like this. Very bare bones, but still meaty in the sense that it's got big sort of wrist guards and a big weapon. So despite its boniness, it's still got sheer strength that an Orc Grunt, when dead, probably would have. Then you've got the bigger, more armored one that sort of stands up and looks a bit more capable of himself than the little one, bigger horns. And then you've got the really cool armored one with the curved horns, huge armor in, massive axe. And this is the one that chucks the death coils at you all the time. He's very annoying. Ooh, sludge flingers. So when you play in the Dalaran section, particularly the Dalaran ruins, it's where all the magic stuff has kind of gone wrong. And you kind of got these gross sludge creatures that cast slow. So this is the icon for slow. So that's a little baby one. That's gross. It looks more similar to the Warcraft. Uh, World of Obviously, this stuff is going to look very similar to World of Warcraft. That's the idea. But um, it does look more similar to World of Warcraft with the skull sort of like being sort of on the front. And this one is just a monster. You can see that the arrows are sort of stuck inside of it. It's kind of translu uh, translucent. You can kind of almost see through it at the same time, but it's still got its own sort of facial structure. It's really cool. Ah, spider crabs. These look really cool as well. They look like crabs. They look armored. The decoration... The texture, the detailing, the claws, everything stands out as it should do. No real complaints with those, except they are quite horrific in terms of their facial structure. They're not quite as cute. Nothing's going to be as cute as the original Warcraft 3 anymore. I mean, goodness, look at that face. Ugh. This is the downside. This stuff is looking too realistic and therefore not looking anywhere near as cute and cuddly. I would not want to cuddle with one of those spiders. We've got the Storm Reaver Apprentices. So these are the guys, for example, on Twilight Ruins, a 4 vs 4 RT map. You would fight these to get access to a Shredder. And the big one would cast, well, this one would cast Chain Lightning on you. This one probably casts Monsoon. But they are holding a skull. They look very much like the Gul'dan model, kind of, looks in Warcraft 3. Where they're basically based off that model. So... Gul'dan, I think, in the new Warcraft Reforge, gets his own model. Whereas in Warcraft 3, his model is basically this, which these are based off. These are based off the Gul'dan model in Warcraft 3. Um, so, they, yeah, they look good. It just reminds me of Gul'dan. Oh, who the hell is Farafas? I don't remember this dragon. Maybe he's a new one for the campaign or something. He looks gorgeous, though. Like the color, the detail. Very scary. Oh, we've got the Tuskars. Look at the fish just dangling off this guy. He's got a little beard. He's got his little spear. This guy's the healer. That guy's like a slightly bigger one. I think he can ensnare as well. This guy's more of a fighter. they got those big sort of bushy beards, moustaches. He's got a thick fur coat. He's got drums. And this guy, wow. What are those? Are those sea lions? They're like the... What the uh, what are the bigger versions of the sea lions? Am I being stupid? I'm forgetting the name for it properly. Like the ugh, the giant ones, basically. The really blobbery looking ones. Basically, that's what this guy reminds me of. He looks great! Because this is more cartoony. I prefer this kind of look. He like still looks kind of like realistic, but he's got more of a cartoony kind of look to it. I'd much prefer that than the realistic. Walrus, that's the one. Yeah, he looks like a big old, thick, blubbery walrus. Oh, wow. Windigos look really different, but I don't dislike it. They got a very similar look to Furbolgs, I feel. 
where they're almost a bit too hunched down with their head. Maybe their head needs to be a little bit higher. But they look very Yeti-like, which is how they're supposed to be, obviously. They're based off Yetis. The thick horns, the different styles of the horns. Very cool. This guy's got like multiple horns coming out. Very beefy. War Stomp, Bash, Reincarnation. Cool. Oh, these are Wild King. They look really humanistic. They look like the eagle. You know? They kind of got these tribalistic looks to them. Almost like they're in costume. They're like a human in a costume. They almost look a bit too humanistic. Um, I feel like the original ones are more fatter, wider, more bird-like. These look like if birds evolved into humans, so to speak. If they actually just evolved. But they look cool. The the sort of like the claws, all the detail, the beards, like the the feathers, the horns. They got they they got it on point. They're just different, that's all. I just have to get used to it. And there you go. Wow, that was the big one. So let's come back from there. Oh my goodness. So yeah. That's the neutral. We still not even got over to the model re renders uh, renders. So let's keep going. The Barrow Den, this is a Night Elf structure. It looks basically just like it, but beautifully HD-ified. That's the Enchanted Gemstone. I think that's in a tower defense map that Blizzard made, or was made for Blizzard. One of the original ones. You might remember the name. The Horn of Scenarius pedestal. That would sort of like float up and down, that horn. Looks really good. That's the Prison Wagon that would be used for Illidan. There's the Night Elf Fishing Village. So these are all the structures that you would typically have in a fishing area where Night Elves would be. Lovely little buildings. They're very tall, very um, beautiful in their structure. Kind of very homely, but they've got those elvenistic uh, sort of decorativeness to them. Ha <laughs> ha! So what? The Warden has a whip and it looks fawny as well. That looked like that would hurt. Looks like it's made from, like, a tree branch or something that's been molded into a whip. A vine. That's definitely the cloak that the Warden wears. So basically what this is, is this is what the Warden model was originally in Warcraft 3 before they made her into Maev. So this is the initial um, model this is based off uh, for the Warden because Blizzards were way ahead of their game when they made Warcraft 3. Like, they actually had a lot of the stuff that was made for the Frozen Throne sort of conceptualized and even put into placeholder practice in Reign of Chaos. They just hadn't quite fleshed it out. And this model was basically based off what the Warden was at the time in Reign of Chaos. And then she grew into Maiev. So Nick says the Shadow Hunter was in Reign of Chaos with the mask on. See, you know, like they had these models sort of like in the bag. They just hadn't quite fleshed them out. So she looks cool. And I love the face, like the detail on that. She looks, yeah, she looks really inquisitive. Okay, cool. So let's move back. Let's go in. So we've done the Night Elf. Let's go to the Orc. Okay, so we're on to Cairn Bloodhoof. I'm not a huge fan of the face. He looks scary. He doesn't look quite as... I mean, he didn't... He looked scary in the original, in a way, but he looked more approachable and cuddly. In this, he looks like he's going to bite your head off. He doesn't look quite as friendly and honourable as Cairn should look. He looks too animalistic, I think, here. I feel like he should have more of a friendlier look to his face, personally. But I started to get used to the stance of the Tauren chieftain and how he looks. And I think the bulk of him looks pretty cool. So, I think I am still a fan of this. I just don't like the portrait so much. His his mouth and his face. There's Drac Fall. This very much looks like another character like um, Gul'dan, which I think is the case because I think Drac Fall is the one that tells you the story of Gul'dan when you're in the Frozen Throne and you go to like the sunken sort of like temple area, sort of like the Risen Islands, and you come across this guy and he tells you of Gul'dan. And he was one of the surviving guys or something. I don't think anyone was supposed to survive, but somehow he must have known. He must have been a survivor. But basically, I think he was a cultist. Of, yeah, he's a cultist of Gul'dan, says Hive Phaser. So, yeah, he looks very much like a Gul'dan wannabe. So that is Drek'far, I believe. Garfok? 
interested. Looks like a young upstart orc who's risen through the ranks of Grunt and is not quite commander yet, but is way working his way up. He's got a different looking weapon. Another model for Grunt, basically. Looks good to me. That looks a bit better, the way he sits on that. But obviously, you can see the size of him compared to him. If you put him down on the ground, he'd be like about this tall. And his legs would be way skinnier and all of that. So that's the, that's the hard thing about getting characters on mounts and not making them look strange. Because obviously, orcs are supposed to be massive. Oh, Garfok is the dying orc Rexar meets in the founding of Durotar campaign, says Nick. Oh, wow. Ah, oh, so he's the one that got killed by the Quillbane and stuff like that. Quillbores. There's Grom. He looks really funny when he's small because he only looks small because he's put against a bigger one that's uh, fell. Again, I just want the fell to look far more vibrant, far more blood red. I want to see that blood red. I don't know what's with this weird pinkish tan that's going on. I'm not a fan of it. Again, Gul'dan needs to put some pants on. I know that he's not really a stylistic guy. He doesn't care about that. He only cares about one thing and that's power. But I just want to see something cover here, like a loin plate or something, or some sort of garb, some cloth that sort of drapes down over his legs. It just is too off-putting. He's got so much armor and gear at the top, but didn't bother to put pants on. Nazgrul. Okay, so he's from the Warcraft 3 campaign. I think that's the founding campaign as well. You, you, is, This is when Thrall is building Orgrimmar, and Nazgrul's one of the guys that gives you quests. He's cool looking. He's got like this kind of shamanistic look to him, but at the same time he's a warrior. So that's another cool model that we're going to get. He's basically looking like a raider, but with a different weapon and a different wolf. Oh, is that a juggernaut? Wow, that's really different. It looks cool, but I hope it doesn't replace the original juggernaut, because the original juggernaut is gorgeous. The modeling of it. Um, you've done well. Good one. You've done well. Let's go. Um... Yeah, the original model is so just out there. Like the colors, the the, the blockiness, the spikes, the, just the sheer shape, the barrel shape of it. Wow, okay, so that's the Orc Destroyer. It actually looks very Night Elfish, but that is the Orc Destroyer because that's how they look more similar in um, Warcraft 2 as well, except the front part looks a bit different, but they have this kind of weird shape. But it's got more of a Night Elfish shape, but with the spikes, it helps you let you know that it is actually Orc. So those are peons. We've seen those. Portrait looks a bit better. I prefer them to look like the younger peons from Warcraft 3 that are more scared, naive, and sort of like clueless. But I'm I'm still okay with these new ones. There's Rokan with that awesome freaking mask and the actual proper weapon that the Shadow Hunter is supposed to use. Here's Samaru. Wow. Has he got a different beard, or is it just looks different in the portrait? It's more sort of fluffed up. I quite like this a lot, because it, it's one of those more simplistic looking portraits, where it's got detail to it, but it seems like the Orc Blade Masters seem very good for this. It's very obvious to tell what that unit is. It's like wizened, but deadly. He's got like blooded looking sort of tusks, so he still looks like a warrior. Gorgeous. There's Thrall. Oh, wow. The portrait for him is actually not too bad. I still don't think it's exactly like Thrall. Looks a bit Batman-esque with this sort of sharp eyebrow there and like not much detail in the eye because Thrall's supposed to have like blue eyes, isn't he? So maybe they put more detail in the eyes there. But I feel like the beard and sort of like the snarl is closer to Thrall. So they're getting closer there. I still think the the armor's too much. I mean, I can live with it. It doesn't bother me. Am I am I going to be bothered by this? No. But if I'm just giving you honest crit criticism, there's way too much spike and do dance, whatever the hell is going on. It takes away from Frawl's cool armor. It makes Frawl not. It makes the whole, the freaking wolf look cooler than Frawl. Okay. Um, Fulgin, looking good. Basically, Shadow Hunter. We got Wind Rider and a dead Wind Rider. <laughs> and there's back to Kayan. Okay, Kayan, Khan. I can't tell whether I'm going to call him. I think he's supposed to be called Kayan, but I sometimes end up calling him Khan. Khan! Alright, moving on to the scenes. So this is for the in-game 
the scenes. Azeroth Grand Prix. Oh, wow. We're going to get to play. Well, we play this on the channel. So YouTube.com slash Witty Warcraft. That's my YouTube channel where you'll probably be watching this. But if you're not, you're watching it on Twitch.tv slash Witty. Witty. W-T-I-I or W-T-I-I Warcraft on YouTube. Come watch. Subscribe. Thumbs up the video if you still haven't done that. There's the Diablo cart looking freaking scary in the portrait. Oh, yeah. you got a plug. This is Battle Tanks. So they've managed to get this map to work and not crash. That peasant looks like he's super in pain right now. So the tracks, this is how it would look if you basically port a map that is currently available on Warcraft 3 into the engine. Because that's what people have done. Obviously it's probably going to crash a lot of maps because there's going to be issues with the game communicating with what it's being told that the assets are supposed to display. High Phaser says we're currently checking out a ton of maps with the new models. It's painless, really. All right, so there's not that much crashing going on. I thought they'd be crashing all the time, because then it crashes anyway these days. Even before Reforged. Ahem. Have a swig of water, fair bogs. Wow. Oh, yes. I love Grom so much. The portrait at the top, so freaking vibrant and so much personality. The model looks great in the game. He is a little thick, but that's okay. And this... Whoa! I mean, the jaw, I don't think is necessarily right. Although I don't know exactly how it looks, but I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be... He just looks cool, though. Like, there's so... He looks like a heavy metal dude. Yeah, he does look like Ozzy a little bit. He's got like this sort of like he belongs in a heavy metal band. So much personality in that face. So fierce, so powerful, so strong. Just... Oh, I love the way these models look as well. It looks a bit better now that I can see shadows, because some of the initial screenshots that we got of in-game on Warcraft 3, Reforged, they didn't show shadows. So it didn't feel like they were connecting with the terrain and the ground. Whereas now, you can see shadows a lot better. The bestiary, the burrow, the war mill, everything stands out, so I can still identify things. The trees look gorgeous. Like, this looks pretty amazing to campaign through. Yeah, the foliage, all of it, looking good. That's mirror image, wind walk, critical strike. There he is, with some cheeky uh, dark trolls. There's the gold mine. Boost of speed, I assume. Ah, he looks, look at him. <laughs> That's a funny pose. So, oh, what are these? Are these fur bulk? Yeah, from one picture to the other. He's like, rawr, let me fight. I don't want to fight these. Oh my god, how big is that one? What is this, World of Warcraft boss? Jeez, someone's been taking steroids. Okay, there's a critical strike going off. You got Blade Storm. That's a nice icon. I like that. You got a bunch of grunts. I, I guess the uh, <coughs> the only issue I'm going to have with the Reforged and the more detail on the models is when they're swinging weapons like this, they almost look like they're going to overlap onto other units because it's they've kind of been rendered on top of the original units and almost in some way been made bigger in some ways and sort of more stretched out and spaced out. Whereas the original models, they will sort of overlap on one another, but you can identify them better. This, you can see there are five grunts, but it those two feel like they're sticking too much. So I, I'm a little bit concerned about that for gameplay wise. Ah, oh, there's Prince Kaofas, aka Todd. Then we must seal them permanently. You got the uh, Burning Crusade gate. Well, it looks like it, but it might not be the exact same one. It's a similar one anyway. So this is a phoenix. Where's the phoenix? That's not a phoenix. So maybe there's no actual picture for the phoenix yet. Ah, so maybe that is the Naga Sea Witch. Because it had that one icon there. It had, it's had. it got a kind of a male look to it, to be honest. It's got like a kind of a stoic, um, Mayan male look. Kale Fast is looking cool. He's like snarling a little bit. He's got arrogance. Oh, look at Illidan. He's proper snarling. He looks a little bit too much like a goblin, though. Like he's got too much of a kind of a jowl going on and pointy nose. I like the buildings here. 
Oh! Is this Avatar? So that's an ogre, magi. Looks kind of weird. Looks kind of peaceful. Not so dopey. He looks a little bit too, um... That, that one looks dopey. That one looks a bit smarter. I suppose that's probably the idea. I don't know what these two things are, other than that being some weird demon creature. That's really odd. Is this that Fire Lord and then Lava Spawn? Fire Lord and Lava Spawn. Is that what they're supposed to... Oh, I don't know. What's going on there? Those are little spider critters. <coughs> That's a very odd looking master crafter about to go to battle with a water elemental that almost looks like he's flying. Like that just looks really weird, that screenshot. We've got a silverback wolf. So the wolf has got his own look here. That's cool. And then we're back to the uh, Grand Prix. So let's come back. We've got the scenes. Now we've got the model renders. So we're going to go through the buildings here. <coughs> now we can see the Ancient of War stood upright. Looking very scary. This is the corrupted one. Because it's got the purple tree. Ooh. <laughs> what the hell? What? How do you go from something that looks so realistic to something that looks so characteristic and cartoony? Yeah. He looks like he's going to groom someone. Uh, this is a cool looking uh, corrupted moon well. I mean, that's a very small looking pool. That's an Ancient of Wonders, isn't it? It's a corrupted Tree of Ages. I keep mistaking the Tree of Ages for Ancient of Wonders. Okay, so that's the Dalaran Guard Tower. we got the Trenai Barracks. Bear in mind that these models may not be complete. Lest I say that once more. That's the Draenei Haven. That looks more similar to the World of Warcraft kind of Draenei building architecture. The Den. The Magic Tower. We've got the Way Gate here. That's very different. That's a very steep set of t stairs. Okay. That's going to be weird, isn't it? Like, you could actually put like a treant, can't you? Can you put an Ancient of War through a Way Gate? I haven't done it in a long time, but I'm pretty sure you could do. So how's an Ancient of War going to climb up there? Anyway, let's come out of that. <coughs> We're going to go on to Demon now. So we've done buildings. Go on to Demon. We've got Archimond. Let's go full screen. So this is like a T-pose Archimond. Some of the colorization isn't quite complete on him. The face doesn't look quite like Archimond at the moment. He needs to look more sort of scowly and angry, but at the same time fully in control. He looks pretty beefy, but I think people wanted him to look even bigger because he's more of a warrior, so maybe a little bit wider. There's the back of him, a very erect tail. This is a Garganosh or Asgalar in this case, but I think there's a Garganosh uh, pit lord that uses the same hammer. I like that hammer. I really do. So this is where I think they want to put like a flame kind of spell effect, but they haven't quite got that yet. Oh, wow, the Felguard. Look how beefy the Felguard is. I mean, they are supposed to be. Like in the original Warcraft 3, they're very sort of fee-shaped. Incredibly fee-shaped. Like super, super bulky, beefy characters. And the weapon is very similar as well. Like this super strange long polearm slash sword. Cleaving. Just such a strange, bizarre weapon, but so cool. There's the Doom Guard. He looks a bit cheeky. He looks even cheekier. And that is a weapon... That belongs to the Doom Guard. This is a blue Eridar. Who obviously looks a bit evil with the whole skull thing. He looks like a, a quest giver or something. You would approach him and say, Go kill ten blood elves for me. Ah. So this is actually like uh, the mercenary type units. So there's the purple one. That's like the spellcaster type one. <clears throat> yeah, warlock basically. And then there's the red one. I like the webbing on the wings. Very cool. Now that's a fell stalker. I just think their legs need to be a little bit beefier, but I don't mind it too much. They look a little bit too bony, but at the same time, it gives them that kind of lifeness, like that liftness, like they're, they're, they're like a prowling cat ready to pounce kind of thing. The whole angle of their body is like going to pounce. So I get that they're a bit skinnier in some places. But it does look a bit odd from certain angles. 
How ripped is this guy? So that's another fell guard, but the red version. This guy's stretching out a bit too much. Now that is the fell orc blade master. That's more of the kind of red tinge, because I said that the portrait for the red, uh, the fell orc blade master looks really good. Like uh, he looks more like um, a fell orc because he's more bright, vibrant red. That's more of the fell color that I want. Not this kind of weird pinkish tan or dark brownish reddish tan. So we've got Fell Orc Grunt here. Obviously, got to have some spikes when you're a Fell. Just throwing some spikes. That's a Fell Orc Kodo rider. So the freaking poor Kodo got corrupted as well. He looks very angry. And I think people wanted that, didn't they? They wanted the Kodos to look a bit angrier. A bit more chompier. Oh, wow. That's the rider up close. So he's got like a thick beard. He doesn't look quite as fat anymore. He's still got a bit of a belly, but he's more bulkier now. So the steroids from the fell orcs have helped. This looks like something taken from um, Warhammer. i got to say, this totally looks like a character from Warhammer. But <clears throat> that's the fell orc peon in more of a T-pose shape. Uh, yeah, it's the newer peon. They look sort of like more slouchy, more fatter, more podgier. I prefer their younger, more naive. I said it earlier, but I just prefer their younger, more um, dopey semen self. Like they were sort of like, they didn't quite realize what they signed up for, but they were just going ahead with things. I could do that. It's just like, okay. That kind of approach. I don't feel like these characters would sort of say that, what their lines are, their voice lines as much. Now, this is a fell orc warlock. How gorgeous does that look? We saw that earlier. I mean, the Fell Orc Warlock in Warcraft 3 is very basic. He's got like a very basic helmet, very small shield, very sort of weird pointy pickaxe type staff weapon. He looks really extravagant here. Really extravagant. I love it. It looks gorgeous. Oh, that's the blue Fell um, Guard. And he's got a totally different weapon. It's so weird. It's like this circular but still sharp axe. Their weaponry is so cool. Ah, okay, so <clears throat> this is where we get to Fell Ravager. My voice is completely starting to break now at this point. So if you do enjoy this, make sure to thumbs up, subscribe. I'm going to keep saying that, but just please do. I want to hit so many likes and thumbs up buttons. It does help so much. Helps the channel grow. Uh, share this on the Reddit and all that kind of stuff if you wish to do so. So yeah, these are way scarier. These are like something from a freaking horror movie. With that skull face. Terrifying. Now, that's the Infernal. Standing upright, it still looks too tall and like a human male. Like a, He looks like a basketball player or something that's got some big shoulders. They just look too tall. They need to look more blocky and beefier. Like, his legs are too long in a way. Okay, there's Kill Jaden. He's got that vicious looking snarl, sort of like the eye sort of scar. Very extravagant looking armor. He's killed Jaden the Deceiver. There's Magferidon. I feel like that <coughs> is what Manoroth looks like. If you make him darker blue slash gray, that is what Manoroth should look like. And you obviously change the breastplate, or the loin plate, whatever the hell we're calling that thing. I feel like this is more what Manoroth should look like. I feel like the Manoroth that we've got at the moment, the model doesn't fit Manoroth at all. Wow, there's the Maiden of Pain. Yee. Enough said. There's Manoroth. He looks too dopey in this. He's kind of supposed to be a little bit. He's not perfect. He just loves sort of killing things, but he's still a bit of a grunt in comparison to the actual sort of commanders of the Legion. Yes, he is like a high up on their pecking order, but he still sort of does the bidding of Archimond like a grunt would. I like the weapon, the thickness. I still think the this needs to be way bigger. This needs to like come out to here. Like his original weapon is freaking massive. These don't quite do the justice. But that that breastplate is so cool. 
Okay, so this is where I assume if they can, they'll put like kind of a fell fiery spell effect, ideally, but I don't know whether it's possible in the game engine, so I'm not expecting it. It would just be nice. So this is Mafog with that beautiful looking spiked club. He's like a haphazard fell orc, sort of orc, um, orc general. He kind of looks like a fell orc there, though, don't he? Because he's got like this darker red skin. There's a pit lord that looks like a dragon. Is that a dragon or is that a pit lord? It looks too much like a dragon king, doesn't it? But maybe it's just another form of a pit lord. Maybe pit lords can look like dragons as well. They can have that dragonish fa face. But it reminds me a bit of the Mario Brothers film, the Goombas. And there's a rather undead looking pit lord. And then we're back to the Queen of Suffering. Yee yee. Oh, okay. Moving on to Succubus as well. Nice little whip. Oh, I love the decoration on this one. File Temptress. Oh, File Tormentor. We're being spoiled. She's got like pink glaives. Or pink daggers, sorry. There's a beefy looking Foid Walker. Those are pretty cool. Those look like the World of Warcraft ones. Those shoulder pads are basically exactly like the World of Warcraft ones. And there's back to Archimonde again. Who, you know, on second glance, look at him. He does look quite commanding there. Very serious looking face. He is a very serious character. He's a very much straight to business character. Oh, wow. We still got quite a bit to go through. So bear with me here, guys. This, I knew this was going to be a long video, but I think this is going even longer than even I anticipated. Black Citadel statue. We have a very gorgeous, realistic looking humanistic character holding a sword. Very beautiful architecture. It looks really real, to be honest. It looks like someone carved that in real life and took a picture of it. You know what I mean? I could imagine that being an ornament on my shelf or something. Here we've got the different bridges. This is really cool to see because we've only seen the one bridge so far. They're very different. This looks like kind of like a panda style bridge. Closer to sunken temple. Definitely sunken ruins. More sort of um, on the outskirts of like a, a village. For like in between Lordaeron and one of the human villages. Sort of like that's a similar deal. That's closer to Lordaeron. That's a rickety sort of bridge. That's kind of an extravagant Blood Elf one, and that's a Frozen Throne one. So, we have the capital city buildings here, apparently. Not quite sure which bits they're supposed to represent. Perhaps they're Elven in architecture. Not 100% sure. City doodads. So, a beefy-looking fatter knight. Weird-looking obelisk there. The water fountain. The sort of the gate. Okay, so we've got like a human structure here. Lighthouse over here. It almost looks like it's been ported from World of Warcraft. And that looks like the citadel, like the um, church kind of citadel model, but a lot brighter. Yeah, this looks like it's taken from World of Warcraft as well. The new chapel. Cathedral, that's the word I was looking for. Thank you very much there, um, Surrex and Ice Cat and Gordon as well. Anyone else want to say cathedral in chat? Um, yes, so clock towers. Now, this is definitely Dalaran because there's a lot of purple going on there. Nice, looks on point. The towers, there we have the Dalaran King's throne, so we saw that earlier. <laughs> there's the Diablo cart. So, if you play the Grand Prix map, you can play as this character, it's pretty funny. Dungeon port, Callus Wall. Then we've got a whole bunch of models. ETC, so this is the band that plays at the end of the Frozen Throne. Elite Torrent Chieftain. I am the song of the wind and rain. Hear the thunder and the back in my call. I can't remember all the lyrics, even though I've heard the song like a million times now at this point. Storm, earth, and fire, hear my call. So these are going to be the guys playing in the band. Looks like we've got Thrall perhaps playing or singing. We've got uh, a troll playing the guitar. We've got a tauren, I think, on the drums. We've got undead playing the guitar. Sort of like the electric guitar. And then maybe an elf doing the bass. Yep, that's a closer look at the models. 
That's pretty, uh, pretty detailed. I think someone had fun with this. There's the frozen throne. Ah! That looks like the frozen throne Lich King armor set. Wow, that's gorgeous. Look at the gem. That's got a really mystifying look to it. Really good work on the gem on that. Like, it's so subtle, but at the same time, it really stands out. Like, kind of like that teal blue. It almost like it shines. You can see, like, a little gem on these parts as well of the skull. Really cool armor set. Ah, Lich King on the keyboard. Keyboard and mouse. Totally, you could put a keyboard here and a mouse there. Okay, so we've got some more gates. They, The gates are really good looking. Like, we've seen a lot of them, and I've I've liked all of them. Oh, Hell Screams Throne. Yeah, I was going to say that. I've got a Garrosh vibe from this. So this is where Hell Screams chilling out when he sort of turns evil. And you have to basically trap him in a soul gem, I think. If memory... Oh my god. That is a Hydralisk. So yes, in Warcraft 3, there's a Hydralisk model, there's a Sergling model, there's a Marine model, so basically a Terran Marine, and there's also an Orc um, sort of uh, Marine model, which is more of like a kind of like a fire dude. He's sort of like sort of throws flamethrower. Uh, yeah, that's that's a Hydralisk, but it's in Warcraft 3. Look at the frozen throne here. Okay, so we've got some shop doodads here. Getting a Diablo 3 vibe, particularly from that one. Like, I can imagine some sellers. So if you was uh, on the outskirts of Lordaeron or something, in a nearby village, visiting a market. We've got Orgrimma under construction doodads. I guess that does look like Orgrimma under construction in certain parts. This is an Outland altar, so you wouldn't want to be caught on top of that, because that's a nasty looking uh, sword. And a standard. Silver Moon doodads. So that's like the High Elves. Yes, so that was a bridge for like Blood Elves or High Elves. And there's the character models, I think, to give sort of like um, scope as to the size of the buildings. I like the uh, walls. They're very sort of thick, sturdy, but at the same time look beautiful. Okay. Some Fury Spire. We've got a special ice bridge. Ah, Statue of Scenarius. Yes, he's beckoning you to his call. He looks kind of scary there, though. I mean, he is quite a fierce dude, Scenarius, but at the same time, he's just quite peaceful and loving. This is a lot of the Tomb of Sargeras um, architecture, sort of like the Sunken Ruins tile set. Ashara statue. That's interesting. Because, yeah, she has, like, multiple sort of... I guess they're going off the World of Warcraft Ashara now, aren't they? All the different sort of um, tales. Exterior gates. The Sargeras exterior ter um, sorry, tower. This gorgeous looking Sargeras. It was a Sargeras gate. Okay, Sargeras tower. <laughs> That's the undead car. Again, you can have that in the, the Grand Prix. A lot of people pick that. Uh, Blair, undead car boo. So that's Kel Facade, looking very scary. <laughs> There's the Raft Gate, which definitely looks a lot more like the World of Warcraft Raft Gate, made from the Ebon sort of material, sort of like the blood of the old gods. And then we're back to the Black Citadel statue. Okay, we're almost there, guys. Bear with me. We're moving on to the humans now. We've seen a lot of these. This is a very basic looking Arthas. Oh, he looks pretty cool there. That looks very kind of reminiscent of the um, scene where you can see him sort of like standing in front of the frozen throne that's in the distance. And he's wearing the cape and it's just blowing in the ice cold wind. It, re it reminds me of that. Look, he's got like icicles on the shoulder plates. So there's the Blood Elf Engineer. Blood Elf Lieutenant. Peasant for the Blood Elves. Uh, Chaplain. So he's like an emissary type character. Then there's Dagran the Orc Slayer. The emissary for the Blood Elves. And then we've got Halak the Lifebringer. Ah, there's his sword. It's a cool looking thing. And then that was the High Elf Archer. See, I told you, I, I said like um I prefer the High Elves like to have this more brighter colour to them. 
Like the elven archers should have a more bright color. That's what I want Sylvanas to look. It's a little bit brighter. A little bit more chipper. High elf arc mage or arch mage. So they they own, they get their own arch mage as well. Then there's the high elf runner, which would be like an equivalent of the night elf runner. So like there's the back of him. Then we've got the villager with the lumber and the gold sack. The villager woman, so she's just chilling. And then there's the hydromancer. And the jailer Kassan. It's going to be part of the campaign. Then there's Janala Deemspring, so she's got to be part of the campaign. She's kind of got like a, what is that, a rapier sword? With like a kind of an arrow? So is it just an arrow? Is she like an archer or is that an actual sword? It's kind of hard because... That looks like an arrow tip at the end and a wooden shaft, to be honest. But the way she's holding, I think it's a bow. Yeah, it's a bow. I can see it sort of now. It's a curvature of a bow and it's just sticking out from it. She looks like she's from a Disney film, though, with the hairstyle. Oh, look at the grandiose of Kale Fass. They really got him right with that cloak and everything. Kale Fass, no cape. He still looks pretty intimidating, even in that pose. And then there's his father, King uh, Anasterian Sunstrider. Very unique looking weapon. I thought he had a pole arm, though, that sort of split off into two pieces, but I might not be sure. Wow, is that Garifos? Is he a Garifos? Your horse is missing a couple of legs. Clearly not finished. Is that his shield? It's so extravagant. Look how freaking pompous he is. Oh, he even looks a bit chubby as well. I love it. He just kind of comes across as like this chubby noble that like no one likes, but he thinks everyone likes him and he's completely in charge. He's just a complete asshole. But he's given this seat of power that no one can argue with him. So they have to put up with his rubbish. He looks on point. Inhuman beast. Uh, Redfast says Anasterian uh, wields fellow Malorn. You might know it as the Legion Fire Mage artifact. Oh, I think that seems familiar. Is that what that is then? Fellow Malorn. Because I'm not 100% sure. I did do those things, but it was quite a few years ago. Uh, in the books, I read that he, when he battled Arthas. I think it was in Arthas, the book. Oh, look, yeah, he is. They made him a bit chubbier. Look, look, his nose is kind of like drooping. He looks like someone that got put in charge that totally didn't deserve to be put in charge. And that basically, that goes for a lot of workplaces. There's a lot of people that their dad is in charge and then they let their son sort of take over, but their son's a complete asshole. He basically reminds me of that. There we have Lord Nicholas Bazan. So I didn't get his name right, but that was it. Margoth the Defender. And a siege tank in Reign of Chaos. Oh, wow. Nostalgia. That looks really cool. Look at sort of like the chugga chugga train wheels going on there. And then there's Sir Gregory Edmondson. A proud fighter. And then we've got Sylvanas, who's living. I still, I think they're working on their face. They've got to get that face right. But she's looking much brighter here. I know she's got that kind of brown for the ranger to fit in. But I still want her to be like almost yellow and teal. But the face needs work. Then we got the captain looking very cool. Nicely armored up. I love the helmet that the captains have. And then he's got this nice silvery slash stone cape. And then there's Ufa just looking awesome as ever. And back to Arthas. All right, we're we're almost there, guys. We're onto the Naga now. Here's Carl or the Kotals. I don't exactly know how to pronounce them, so ever since I just called them Carl. Carl. They look gorgeous. Look at the difference. It's like the blood red here into the orange, into the green, into the blue. Oh, what a gorgeous looking creature. Like that helps because it's basically just a snake that has wings, but with all of this coloring. They make it look like it's so much more. There's Lady Fash. I don't quite get the head or the face yet. The original looks very unique. I don't... She just looks quite bland, her face at the moment. Looks very generic. There's a Murgle Slave, which is basically the worker unit. Because you can see he's got the lumber and the gold sack. 
There's the Royal Guard. Scary character. Very colourful in this case. Very colourful. Naga Sea Witch. There's the Snapdragon, which looks more like the Fell Stalker, in the sense that it's more sort of its front legs and its hind legs are more hunched up together, almost like they're parallel with one another. Almost. So it's much more stubby. It looks really cool though, but I'm so used to the Snapdragon being kind of elongated. But I can get behind this. And there we go. So that's the Naga stuff. Right. On to the neutral. We have... Da, 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 an apprentice wizard. So he's like the very basic wizard that you would kill, like a level one creature. You know Tyrannus Stand? I'm pretty sure he's one of those. You have a couple of you have a three of those to kill right next to one another. Very, very easy to kill. Uh wow, there's an Azure Dragon. Looking very similar to Saffron. Quite noble and scary. Oh my goodness. There's a very frost ridden dragon there. Beautiful colouring. Ah, is that an old school ballista? And then we got a bandit. I love the colours. Like, they just threw on all sorts of colours. Because they are. That's what I meant. Like, they're ragtag human warriors. Not really warriors, but they, they're basically thieves and bandits, isn't they? That's, it's in the name. They're just like a sort of like a militia of human that sort of terrorise villagers and steal. He's got like this kind of bolted on helmet. He's got some sort of like shabby armor, wooden buckler, like a knee plate with spikes. Very crude, which is what how they should be. Very crude. Then there's the bandit lord. I'm really getting behind that bandit lord. Look at the sheer pose of him. Very, like he looks like a viking. Looks scary. Bandit mage, much more wizened. Banshee ghost. Wow. She almost looks quite pretty. Like... A night elf just sort of killed too young or something. It's just sort of like her life was stolen from her. Banshee Wraith. Wow, very Victorian-esque. We're moving on to the Beastmaster, which is having trouble loading for some reason. Uh, I'll give it a moment. If not, then I'll see if I can come back and... Can I get to the Beastmaster? Where is he? Let's just load him up separately. Oh, there we go. To work now. Oh, so that's the tavern version of Rexar, is it? Okay, I could get behind that. The face is a little bland, but I like the armor, and he does look quite beefy. Interesting. The feet look uh, a little unfinished at the moment, like they've just been sort of 2D textured on. Oh, okay. The face looks a bit better up close. It's a bit more garishy. Looks a bit dopey. I want to see some markings, though. Maybe on the right cheek or something. Some scar. Something to... And his ear needs to be pierced or something. I don't know. Tr more tribalistic. There's a black dragon. Very scary. Ooh, a bronze dragon. Looking much more like a gold dragon. But then again, to be fair, in Warcraft 3, the bronze dragons, they look pretty goldish. They do look bronze. They have got more of a bronze than gold, but they still got that kind of goldish gleam to them. There's a catapult. Old school catapult. That's cool to see. Ah, oh, centaur and paler. Look at that. Very different to the centaurs that we know. That's a that's a pretty looking centaur, to be honest. Very looks very humanistic compared to the sort of more rugged, animalistic ones that we know with the weird jaws as they talk. They go, ah, like that. Centaur Khan. Well, uh, we know what he's uh, inspired by, don't we? There we go, Centaur Sorcerer. So they look more similar to like the World of Warcraft equivalents, except even more humanistic. There's Chen. Then we got the horrific looking corrupted treant. Dalaran Butin. Dark Hole uh, High Priest. Death Revenant looking super powerful. Oh, Defender Golem. This is cool. It's like a. Uh, wow, look at that. It's really, really nice. I like all this sort of like the spikes sticking off of it, the moss that's grown over it. He's been defending for a long time. 
Oh, Dranai Akama with different weapons this time. Looking pretty awesome, to be honest, with the hood. The face doesn't necessarily fit him quite, but it is almost there. Almost there. Then we've got Dranai Demolisher. That's a cool looking little vehicle. Uh, Dragon Spawn Green, where they got that kind of. They, they, they are dragony. I just got to get used to those models, that's all. I like that one more. I feel like the colorization of that one sort of works well with the armor. Then we got their weapon. This one's more of a maybe spellcaster. Yeah, it says it's a sorcerer. And I love the green on it. Yeah, I get behind that a bit more. These owl bears are so weird because of their arms. I guess that they do look like bears in that way. With those kind of like thick, sort of stubby legs, but beasty arms. They're just a they're a very different model to what I'm used to, so I like them. I just think it's gonna take some getting used to with some of these. Okay. That looks like a faceless one. Very sort of squiddy looking. The white on the armor pieces is gonna be the player colour. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's cool. More of that then. So you could see this guy's player colour would be like this bit, this bit, these, and this. What <laughs> the hell? That fell bore. He looks like a really old man. Do you see that as well? Like a really old biker or something like that. That has like, still been living in the 70s. There's the Fire Lord. Oh, it was the Fire Lord. Oh, he looks horrific, doesn't he? They're obviously still working on the Fire Lord, and he's going to be hard work, because the original model, I've said this time ago, it's not... It's it's a cool model, because it's unique, and we're used to it, but if you looked at it, if someone just showed the Fire Lord model to someone now, the Warcraft 3, who's never seen it before, they would go, that doesn't look right. So, I don't envy the person that's got to work on that, because it's not an easy task. I like these, the forest troll colours, kind of like these light-ish green. They almost look kind of eel, but at the same time, far more similar to the jungle, more frog-like. Oh, forgotten one. Ooh. I feel like that bit needs a bit more work on the texture, and it looks a bit too cartoony. Although I keep sort of like giving mixed messages because I want things to look cartoony and stuff, but at the same time, not. This is a model without lighting, etc. That's true. So you don't have all the exact lighting. It's just, I know, th these are obviously bare basic models and stuff again, but they're very good. Um, yeah. This looks like a chef panda or something. What the hell? It's a fur bowl pandaren. But what he's wearing looks like he's a chef as well, like he's wearing an apron. Ah, the Knoll Archers. I honestly think the Knolls might be the best models that they've actually shown us out of all the updated models. Like when they showed that Knoll in um, 2018, or a, a leaked one. So here's the Goblin Alchemist. I think someone said in the comment, but I didn't catch it because I still need to go over my comments of the other day. Um... The model's based off like a World of Warcraft version of the uh, the Goblin. Oh, sorry, the Ogre part. I know that this is the Goblin Alchemist. I did point it out that it's the Goblin Alchemist that actually rides the Ogre. Uh, I think it will take some getting used to. For me personally, this feels like they changed it too much. I prefer the old Ogre. But that's just always going to be me. There's the Shredder. That one looks kind of cool. Very goblin-esque, the face on the front of that shredder. I like that one a lot. I mean, even look at him. He's got like his gaps in his teeth. He's got little work tools. He's got a bandage around him as if he's been cut there from working and like cutting himself because they are, they're very reckless. There's the sappers with their equipment. And then we've got the shredder again. The zeppelin looks pretty amazing. Pretty much right on point to the original Zeppelin. So that's really cool. There's the uh, Golem statues that I really liked from earlier. And even the Granite Golems I can get behind. They're a very cool looking model. And I think that's fine because the original ones are literally just blocks when you think about it. 
we're just used to it, so we think that's more acceptable. But these are way more detailed. There's the cute bear pig. It looks like a cross between a pig and a bear. I love it. Ah, oh, these guardian golems as well. These golems are so cool. <gasps> There's a harpy queen. Wow, they look quite beautiful. And they look very deadly as well. It's something like um, the whole mermaid deal where the top part is like quite alluring. But then as you get like further down the appendages, they start to get far more animalistic and vicious. Oh, wow. How cool does this tro ice troll warlord look? Oh, yeah, look, they are. They're so stubby. These mammoths are way stubbier than the original mammoths. I don't know how they're going to make that work. Maybe they're bigger in general, so... Because the original mammoths are actually fairly long in length. They're not super long, but they're longer than these. These are like freaking smart cars. Super stubby. That infernal machine looks pretty gorgeous. Maybe it needs to be a little bit darker and ominous. But otherwise, obviously, I think they're still working on the colouring and stuff. It looks pretty amazing, that does. I love these jungle beasts. Ah, oh my god, it's a kobold! I forgot about those little creatures. Yeah, they look more like the original World of Warcraft ones. Horrific looking beasts. Ah, oh, Magnetar. Yeah, I love this guy. I think he looks fantastic. His face, like the whole upper body of this character just looks insane. Macrora. Misha level 4, so there's more symbolization on him. There's the mug golem. Yeah, that looks more like the mug golem. Ooh, that's like a kind of fairy dragon looking Murgle. Now that's a uh, flesh eater, so he's had a rough time. Then there's the Murloc Tide Runner. This is the one with the shield that has like the black blocks because of the way the shield was rendered back in the day. And he's got like a coral kind of weapon. That's a Nerubian. So they got far more spiked legs, but they still got this spidery feel to them. They look really cool, to be honest. I think those look amazing. Um, I'd love to play those as a custom character and like a sort of a hero defense or something, a spellcaster. Never Dragon. So those don't quite look anywhere near the original because the originals are basically just this sort of like um, ominous dark color that you can't really make out the shape of the creature whereas this you can see the creature a lot more it's more sort of purpley and sort of multicolored sort of it's phasing in because it's supposed to be sort of phasing and out i think the never dragons there's a neutral ship looks beautiful oh wow ogre looks like a sort of a grunt kind of face doesn't it don't know if it needs to be more rounded the ogre face to look a bit more dopey than sort of more humanistic but it looks pretty amazing they look like the more sort of bulkier, stronger ogres from uh, World of Warcraft. Remember when those ogres got updated? The models, they look sort of like... They still look fat and chunky, but they're sort of like way stronger looking. Which I can get behind, because they are supposed to be ridiculously strong as well. Yes, they're fat, but they're also big and bulky. Like, you don't underestimate them. This is the Ogre Lord. Looks pretty amazing to me. That hammer just would just destroy you. That tapped you once. And look at this giant belly pauldron. Sort of like... What on earth? Beautiful. Okay, so there's the Magi. It kind of looks like uh, the genie from the recent uh, Aladdin movie uh, with Will Smith. But I don't dislike it. Pandar and Brewmaster, another version of it. There's the Raccoon. The original Raccoon in Warcraft 3 is actually one of the more updated models of it. But this one obviously is a little bit more fleshed out. Ah, there's a red drake. It looks like he's got kind of like a Murgle face. Here we've got the Renegade Wizard. And then there's the Revenant with his pieces separate. I think the Revenants look really cool. It's just hard to differentiate them from everything that they're currently wearing because of their pose. But they're very ethereal and magnificent looking. Like, they basically look like the Lich. Just... Another sort of armoured version of the Lich with like more cool armour and stuff. Because the Lich has a very cool vibe to him. The way he sort of floats and just glowers. There's Rexar. Still think he needs to be wider. Not as tall. I want his legs to be shorter or something. And his torso to be a little bit shorter. Rogue Wizard. He looks pretty uh, regal for a rogue. Wow! Sasquatch Oracle! This is really cool. 
So we got another look at the Sasquatch. So you know you had the Wendigo. Again, you had all these Sasquatch models. They were like white, green, and brown. But basically it was the same model. These are really different looking models. But So they're redoing it. Wow, that looks incredible. That's like the World of Warcraft one. There's a satyr. Which obviously have the night elf and looks. Because they are basically night elves corrupted. There's the female one. So the shadow dancer is now a female shadow. Uh, it's now a female satyr. So there you go. The soul stealer almost looks female. But I don't think it is necessarily. Because it's got a beard. So probably not. Just the face structure looked a little bit more feminist. Uh, there's the uh, sea giant behemoth. With the squid hat. Oh look there's this sea turtle. Yeah, it's got more of a turtle face, but it's just nowhere near as cute. And there's the amazing golems. The skeletal orc champions are great as well. Oh, look! Snowmane the Blood Gorger. So there's another Knoll model. I love these Knoll models. He looks really beefy for a Knoll. Proper bruiser. Like a gladiator. This horrible spider. There's another really cute looking bear pig. I love the bears. There's The Rexar is so cute. Maybe they're going to sell this as a fluffy toy. I wonder. I bet they're going to sell this as a plushy toy or something at BlizzCon. It looks too cute to not be sold as a toy or something. Like, hold me to this. See if I'm right in like a, you know, what, a couple of weeks' time. If they don't try to sell him as a, 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 as a toy or something. A fluffy toy. A fluffy... Uh, what is it called? A plushy toy. That's it. There's a Goblin Tinker. I gotta have to get behind the Goblin Tinker form more. I think I'll buy it more when he's more appropriately sized inside of this. I think so. I just gotta get behind Sorcerer. The Fire Lord looks really cool here. He looks a bit more fleshed out at this point, like the armor draping off of him. I can get behind that Fire Lord, like the horrible looking look in his face. Hey, he looks like he's robot dancing this War Golem. And then there's the Wendigo, which is similar-ish to the Sasquatch, but not more humanistic and not as slouched forward. So it's really cool we've got different looks on those. Right, so that's the neutrals done. Now we're going to move on to the Assassins. I think uh, Night Elf Assassin, we're almost there. We are almost, I have no idea how long this video is, probably over two hours at this point. Uh, there's the Assassin. Um, that is basically the, the Night Elf Warden model, the original one before Maev. That boat looks gorgeous. Is that an in-game or is that a concept model? It looks like it's structured as if it's actually been created. So it's 3D structured. So I think it is an in-game model. It looks beautiful. And then there's the battleship version. Which is bulkier but still has those lovely lines. They're all in-game models. Yeah. Ah, here's the Watcher. So she's got more of that kind of glaive going on there and we're back to the ass assin oops let's come back onto this and neutral night elf orc so we've got drac full so let's go full screen that was the um gul'dan style character that tells you the story there's drek far very tribalistic looking character there's Garfok, who's starting to remind me of Thrall now. There's Gazlo. There's his uh, contraption, Robo Goblin. There's the amazing Grom Hell Scream. He looks like an absolute unit. There's his weapon. Um, why can I not remember the name of the Gore Fiend? Could someone please remind me? I should know the name of his axe, but I can't remember it for the life of me for some reason. It's annoying me. Gore Howl. Not Gore Fiend. Gore Howl. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Gorehow, very iconistic. There's, uh, oh, that's a bit better. Like, I just want those draping just a bit more over the, just knee high. So if he just has clothing that just drapes over the upper legs, I'd much appreciate that. He looks really cool from the back, though. That looks like a dead Gul'dan. Not doing so well. There's Nazgrel. You've done well. And there's the Orc Juggernaut, which is gorgeous. It looks really good, but it doesn't have like the sort of more comical colorings of the Warcraft 2 and Warcraft 3 one, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, that's an Orc Destroyer. Reminds me of, um, did anyone ever see the original Tron? 
You know when they basically travel? I, it's been so many years since I've seen that film, but they sort of almost... It, it looks like they almost travel in space or something, like they're in that kind of ship that's in the sky, and it puts the, the sails out. It reminds me of that, and it just sort of travels along. Does anyone remember that? Am I, am I the only one old enough here to remember that? Latest trend, adding a uh, listic to anything he can. Yes, well, I, I mean, how, how many... I've been talking for like two hours. How many words do you want me to use? Um, Yace says he remembers it. So this guy uh, is the Orc Warlord on the horse. That looks more like a, the kind of character that you come across in the campaign. So uh, it's kind of funny because he's stolen the horse because he's terrorizing the human villagers. So he's like mastered the horse and made it his own, choosing not to go with the wolf rider. There's Rokan. Oh, keep the mask on. What the hell? That's a thing of nightmares. That is. That looks way too humanistic. That face. Obviously, it's been kind of sculptured on. But I think keep that mask on. To be honest. Yeesh. There's Samuru. There's a Storm Reaver Warlock. They look really cool. They're very similar to like the um, Fell Orc Warlocks in terms of how they've been sort of more armored. There's a Thrall Champion. So this is him when he's in more of a shamanistic form. He's got like his simple garb, the beads, the chains around. He's like, yeah, he looks pretty cool there. That looks more like Thrall, the face there. This is Thrall on foot and then he doesn't look like Thrall there. You see, that looks more like Thrall there, that face. And then this looks like someone else's face. It's kind of got like a bit of a snarl that Thrall would have and like the pointed eyebrows and the ear, but it doesn't look like him. You look at the two there. He almost looks a bit fat there in the face, but that still looks like Thrall, whereas this one doesn't, in my opinion. This looks like Blackhand. Yeah, could be. Doomhammer, maybe. You're right. That could even be Doomhammer for all we know. Um, there's Fulgin. And that's your Orc models. Moving on to the last. And there's only a few. It's the Undead. So we haven't got much to go with the Undead. But that will probably come with time. So taking a look, first of all, at the Dark Ranger. So very life and, uh, you know, agile. She looks... Like she's capable of pouncing and firing black arrows off and then pouncing onto the next target. So quite bare, but at the same time, I think it could work for her. She's got this really cool looking sort of face mask and the eyes are barely visible, but they're dark shadows underneath. There's the back. Very nice. <laughs> and then there's the undead transport ship, which basically does look like an undead transport ship. It almost looks a bit orcish as well. So let's just come back to the back of uh, the Dart Ranger and finish off there. So thank you very much, everyone. Thanks to Hive Workshop, where I got the links to all of this. So check out Hive Workshop if you want to see like links to all of the stuff that I'm covering here. And um, yeah, thank you to Archeon for creating it and those that helped contribute. So if we clicked on here, Archeon, um, Steven, uh, SRB, and Songzi, as well as others. Thank you, guys the efforts that have been put in and if you want to catch more then make sure to subscribe thumbs up the video check me out twitch.tv slash witty streaming uh, Tuesday to Sunday 12 o'clock to 1400 or 12 o'clock to 4 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock GMT 1200 to 1400 GMT so yeah thank you guys also check out patreon.com slash witty warcraft WTII warcraft on patreon just a little shout out thumbs up good stuff Thank you so much for bearing with me all this time. Hope you had some fun. Make sure to write down in the comment section any critique you have. And have a good one until the next video where I cover Warcraft 3 Reforged. See you later.